Good afternoon, everyone. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL, and welcome to the special edition podcast and newest entry to the family of live content on my channel called Double Barrel Gaming Presents. As you know, I've changed the focus of the channel to being all live content with some game reviews and unboxings thrown into the mix. When I decided to try my luck, so to speak, in air quotes, at the wonderful world of YouTube, focusing on the community was the foundation on which I built this channel. I started something called the Community Spotlight, where I put the focus on the incredible and amazing people of Twitter and YouTube community who I thought needed others to find, follow, and of course, subscribe to their content. After brainstorming for most of 2018, on how to evolve this channel in a way that I can incorporate this ideology into the live show, voila, Double Barrel Gaming Presents was born. This will be a once a month show that will feature entire panels of your favorite YouTube podcasts. Some you know, some you're gonna find out about. The first superhero team I wanted to start this journey with is none other than the Iron Lords podcast. And after a lot of back and forth, we were able finally to get our schedules in order. So without further ado, let me introduce the incredible panel of superstars. Here is the opening post to who these amazing content creators are, but more importantly, that they're best friends first. Welcome to the Iron Lords podcast. The ILP is made up of four friends who are lifelong gamers that decided to start a show dedicated to the hobby that they all love. First up, and I'm going to take his, I'm going to use his words. Introducing. <laughs> First up, the showrunner of the Iron Lords podcast. He is one, has one of the best voices in the business, where, of course, he says, introducing. Best intro writer on YouTube, huge fan of everything Marvel, Destiny connoisseur, and the only kid to have a real arcade machine in his house growing up, Woo. my very good friend, Lord Cognito. Welcome to the show, my brother. Woo. Oh, I'm hyped. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing. <laughs> I, like that. I practiced that, by the way. I just want you to know that. <laughs> So, well, I just I just want to point out the man said we superheroes. Okay. Uh, yo, he yeah, said no. we are superheroes. <laughs> added, yo, I am lit right now. It's like well, the well, Avengers in the building. Well, look, if if I have an ability, man, I want Flash's ability. You got to keep that in mind. Okay. Yo, we got we got the Justice League. We got the event. We came together right now on Boom Show. Boom. Thank you so much, brother. It is a pleasure to be here. This is long overdue. It took a while to get this to happen, but I'm so happy that all the lords are here, the booms in the building. Man, we're going to have some fun today, man. Let's this is, yeah, we have a lot of hot topics. Uh, we have a lot of funny stories growing up. Uh, so that's, we're going to get into that, but I have to continue these Let's amazing go. openings. Let's go. Next up, we have the man known for taking on the most challenging games in the video game universe. Someone who is very reserved and calculated. He also tells it like it is. And is a very serious but funny way of doing it. Silent Ninja Assassin of the Iron Lords and brother from another mother of Lord Cognito. Please welcome Lord Addict. Yo. Is this, is this <laughs> how you guess Phil Cognito? I don't know, Cog. You got to come up. You know, the, the funny <laughs> thing, the funny like, thing no, is, I've never felt the way about intros like this. The, 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 the funny thing is, is the Lords don't know the intro life. Like, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I did, trust me, guys. I did my homework when doing these intros. Well, listen, dude, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. Welcome to the, the, to the show. It's great to have you. Hey, I appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to be here. I, I just I just read the topics and I'm like, whoa! whoa I didn't even know that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? When it comes to these, uh, when it comes to the shows, man. I mean, like I said, I do. A, I put a lot of work into it. I do a lot of reading. Um, and uh, you know what? I want to put out the best quality content uh, because I respect the listener, the people that are the the 54 plus people that are already listening. I respect the fact that they've taken the time to listen to this show. So, of course, I want to put out a good quality product. But let's let's move on to the next guest. 
Next up, we have someone who is the founder and creator of the Fraud Alert Alarm Company, part-time stand-up comedian, master of statues, and full-time gardener because he's constantly pushing frauds into the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also known as the Incredible Hulk of the Iron Lords, my man, Lord King David. Welcome to the show, dude. Oh, my God. It's, you know, it's like sitting here. I'm, I'm kind of speechless because I get to hear Cognito do it every week for other people. And I'm sitting there like, what Mr. Boomstick going to say for me? Oh, when, when, when he was doing mine, I was like, who's he talking about? <laughs> yeah. He was like, part-time garden. I was like, how do you know I'm out there? <laughs> and then he said, he's throwing them in the bushes. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah, this, this. Like, I was looking at, I, to be honest with you, when I looked at the chat and I was noticing the topics, and I know what you said at that, you was like, I know it looked like overwhelming, but I like to be overprepared instead of underprepared. Yes. And I said, you know what? I can feel that. I respect that. Thank and I'm going to study sir. every topic so I don't be underprepared. I didn't, <laughs> I'm going to point out right now, I didn't do that. Well, I know listen, I heard your it's fraud. Okay, dude. Listen, I, I, I heard fraud. your fraud. <laughs> I, I heard your fraud, and I'm here for you. <laughs> Look, man, I got to do every podcast like I do every podcast. I got to wing. No, it. I see, a, I see, a, I see an alarm going off in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the attic is up right now, so that's kind of different. We like this. This is new. <laughs> All right, well, listen. Last, but certainly. In no way least, someone who at the last minute hit the three pointer and Ooh. had us win the game. Mm -hmm. I I had prepared hit opening for him because he was not originally going to be here, mm -hmm. but he's here today, so we're going to give it to him right now. We have the true single player master, the voice of reason that explains that the single player experience is not selfish and matters in 2018, someone who puts the tech into technical gamer, proud member of the Illuminati, and the man who holds the keys to the Iron Lord's bank account, my man, Lord Sovereign, welcome to the show, my brother. Yo, these are fantastic. Bro. These are so outstanding. These are fantastic, oh, you, bro. We got him a job. Yeah, you have your own Patreon tier, my son. <laughs> you just <laughs> all to yourself right now. I appreciate that, man. Listen, I worked real hard on them. I think that you guys deserve them. I'm going to say this right now. I have been a fan of you guys for so much longer than I have actually been on YouTube. It's bananas. So there's a couple of things. First of all, as a content creator, I, it is my absolute honor to have you guys on the show. That's number one. And I'm going to say number two is this. Uh, I was looking at the numbers because I'm a numbers kind of a guy. And uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, these guys, the Iron Lord podcast, in my opinion, is probably one of the best shows on YouTube. Without Thank a doubt, you. Thank you. they Thank are you. sitting at under a thousand subs, and I'm and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to go out on a limb. That's how sure I am of what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. If you follow me on YouTube or on Twitter and you watch my shows, you obviously trust my judgment. So I'm going to say this live on the air. Please, for the love of Jehovah, <laughs> right now, go over to YouTube sub their channel. And I'm going to say this. I'm Again, I'm so confident about what I'm about to say. It's going to shock a lot of people on this panel. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, the quality and content that comes out of these guys, I will encourage you to unsub my personal channel. That's how confident I am. Thank you so much, wow. bro. That wow, wow, man, you, it means so much to us to to just be appreciated, and um, the fact that you listen to us and and truly value our content. You have no idea how much that means to us. And oh, uh, listen, I, it it means to, listen. <clears throat> I, I I do because I you guys are on today's show. Uh, it's a new part of my channel that I'm jumping off with you guys, and 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 that's a big that's a big deal for me. Um, you know, uh, the community spotlight is uh, is important. No one's doing it, uh, and, but I'm doing it, and it's Facts. because I feel that regardless of what flag you fly, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, uh, you know, plastic console you worship, you can be friends with others, and at the end of the day opening yourself up to the amazing community is really what this channel is all about so of course i'm honored that you guys are the first people the first podcast to you know to to, to launch this new part of my channel but you know what 
Forget about talking about Boomstick. I want to know about the Iron Lord podcast. And again, this is any any of you guys jump in. I'm not going to go. You know, <clears> this <throat> is not the round table part. Please, by all means, let the community know what the Iron Lords podcast is about and why they should subscribe. That's a good one, man. I mean, for us, you kind of nailed it in the beginning of your intro. Is that um, you know, we're lifelong gamers. You know, we all met through gaming. You know, the original IOP is kind of a derivative of Channel 5 and King and Soft Nose. You know, this is pre-addict. And um, ev eventually what happened is Saturdays was kind of the place to be at Lord Cognito's house back in the day. Growing up, growing up in the South Bronx, a lot of things going on around us. You know what I'm saying? And King, Soft, Kai, there's, there's many lords you guys are not even aware of. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying, King, though? Like, that basically... Lord Cognito's house was that haven to get. I don't know off how your mother survived. Yeah. All right, all right. Listen, listen, listen. I got Talk kids. I got kids. Mm -hmm. If my kids told me they were going to be 16 <laughs> hot, sweaty people inside my house for mm -hmm. over 12 hours, we was there for 12 hours a day, <laughs> constantly up and down the steps, making all types of noise. <clears throat> There's no way in hell I would sign up for that. And your mother. <laughs> Signed up for that yes. and then some. Like shout out to Lady Cognito, the, the, the matriarch. You if, know what I'm saying? If I had somebody sitting on my roof, like I'm just, I'm, I really start to put pieces together. We had people that would go out on the, the roof, roof. And just, just start yeah. a game. Why so, the hell are you on the roof? Yeah. So ba basically, boy, how it started was like, like I said, we originally we originally funded projects up um and on Webster Ave. But we had moved and then we got like a, a kind of like a private house. So at that time, when I kind of got of age, like maybe like 13 or so, 14, then like I was able to move upstairs and have like a little, kind of like a little money, one or two bedroom apartment. Nice. And that was me. So that was my space. So what happened is she would fight with me instead of like, you know, being out on the street running <laughs> He's around. Telling the story. He's Go ahead, kid. Go ahead, story. kid. And so, you know what? People have revisionist history. Go ahead, Listen, kid. Now, before that upstairs even happened, yeah. he was inside the back of how how she all right. When yeah, house, house, yes. It was her house was the was I think it was like three bedrooms on the first floor. Yeah. So to go to his room, you had to go past her past room, mom, another yeah. room, and his room was back there. And his room was the tiniest room in the entire yeah. apartment. <laughs> you're right. you're talking, oh, you're talking about the old room. Yes. Yeah, 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 See, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. that's very key into okay. patience Fact. because we would all shuffle into that room. Yes. And at that time, it was probably eight of us, nine of us, sweaty, mm -hmm. hot, playing Tekken. Yes. And yeah. we up in there making noise, watching karate films. Yes. And we were right there in earshot of her. Yes. That is correct. That is correct. I, she, the most she's a saint. She mm -hmm. she has to be a saint yeah. in some form to keep <laughs> us together. And then you know what? Instead of throwing us all to the street, uh -huh. because you know they could have did that. Yes. Cognito negotiate the, the, the constant negotiator. <laughs> the constant negotiator. He's, he will constantly negotiate peace at all costs. <laughs> He negotiated the upstairs left. Upstairs, yeah. That's crazy. Cause, he, cause, yeah, because yeah, basically, what happened was, yeah, because basically, what happened was, boom, like, I was like, look, what's the alternative? You were mad if I'm in the street, right? You're mad if you don't know where I'm at, right? So I'm letting you know this is where we're at, and all we're doing is playing video games. So it's like. You can't have it both ways. You can't be mad at if I'm riling on out running the streets or going to where King's projects is or whoever. You know what I'm saying? We so, can't go to my project. Exactly. My project was like so, Vietnam, so it was not happening. So, so that was the win, boom. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so what wow. she's like, okay, you know what? They, they, they're a little loud. They get rambunctious when they lose the video games and they fight with each other. But at least I know where they are. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that was a that, big thing growing up for me, too. My mom always my mom always say this. Yeah. If I don't know your friends, you don't know your friends. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So did that that's the evolution. And it became an every Saturday thing. And it, it evolved into like we would watch the fights. We would stay there. We would order food. <laughs> it, it was. It was yo, <laughs> yo, yeah, okay. yo, yo. All right. So they had a revolt against us. Right? So it's me and Cognito. Me and Cognito will split the cable bill for the fight. 
right? Mm-hmm. So the fight will come up. This is how, see, this is how combat talk really happened. Yeah. This is how it really started. <laughs> Real combat talk. <laughs> All right. So me and him, we were so diehard boxing fanatics that we will pay money, our money out of our pocket, mm-hmm. split it down the middle and watch the fight. If you, if any of you friends came to the house and did mm-hmm. not partake inside this, this, the chipping in, mm-hmm. you could not watch the fight. And they would <laughs> sit outside on the stoop. Yes. So listen, so yes. you know, those mother came inside and said, why is everybody outside on the stoop? They didn't pay. They, they can't pay. come in. She yeah. was like, they got to come in. We was like, no, we put our foot down. They did not pay. They cannot yes. come in. That's real combat talk. <laughs> yo, yo. That's, listen, you know what? I used to kind of do the same thing. I remember, see, and you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. We don't really know each other like we know each other now. Like we're getting to really know each other. And everything that you're talking about is exactly what happened with me growing up. Uh, my, mm-hmm. my house used to be the uh, epicenter mm-hmm. for... Uh, when WWF facts the okay. pay per views, oh. Kate used to have the pay per views. That's all right there. That's all. Okay, uh, and uh, everyone would come over, and you know, you know, we were kids and whatever. So my mom would fit the bill, but you know what? She had this ideology where if she could see her kids, she knew where they were. Mm-hmm. And she knew they weren't getting in trouble because my mom, you know, listen, a lot of people don't know this. You know, my, I had very young parents. My mom had me when she was fifteen. And my dad was 17. And then when she was 17, she had my brother, Jason. Mm-hmm. And then later on down the down the, the road, mm-hmm. and I, I like the story I told, I don't know if I told you about when I was with you guys, my brother, mm-hmm. um, Neo Mental, uh, yes. was, uh, you know, he, he, my father took him under the wing and adopted him into the family. Yes. Oh, that's what's up. And, and he, he, you know, basically spent Christmas with us. Uh, you know, oh. it was just, he was like, he was my father's son. So, uh, and you know, my pop passed away a long time ago, and I think out of mm-hmm. uh, out of the three boys, even though I was crushed, I think he took it the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, my brother Dan, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Neo Mental, as he's known on mm-hmm. uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. is 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 one of the. It's a man that not, not only do I love him, mm-hmm. but you know, he's the mo- one of the most important pieces of my particular life. So, uh, you know, he was always involved. So I, we had those exactly what you're talking about. The guys piling into the room for us, it was watching resident evil and, you know, uh, know, 13 dudes. Yes. Falling back in their chair when the therapist jumped to the window. For yes, the and you, you know gotta have saying? the lights low. You gotta have the lights. The lights low. were off. People were falling yes. over. T- tables were going over. <laughs> you know, it, so I understand what you're talking about. So that yeah. that's that, you know that's what, what an amazing. So I gotta tell you guys, thank you so much for sharing that because that that's big. There's still there's still one more part. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> I ain't finished. I ain't finished. So so basically, the evolution was that, and then the gaming, like you said, with the whatever the big game is, someone would bring it over. You showcase your game with the Lord. Sometimes you showcase your new console at oh. your own expense. Yeah. But if it was trash, <laughs> aka the Jaguar, but we ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, it was it, it evolved from that to the wrestling games with Solve and Kaibatsu and Sinister and Valakon. It, it evolved to Halo and before Xbox Live and getting four TVs and being yeah. in one space. We went to the Wiz on 3rd Avenue. Everybody the ch- Wiz. You know what I'm saying? Like $150 and we did it, man. And Drop it was, those names. You already know, man. Now we learned about net, basic networking land cables and a network switch. Shout out to Sovereign. <laughs> Shout out to Sovereign. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we, we did that thing. And then, like I said, for, that was like the first part, right? So then the second part now when we kind of go from Channel 5 to ILP is now I'm on Xbox Live, we, you know, very constantly. I start meeting these guys. I start meeting anchor man. I start me and then I start to be addict. I'm like, man, I like him. He's wild. I like him. <laughs> but he reminded me of me, like unbridled. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So me, me and addict get close and we start we start vibing and doing, like I said, we play a lot of games together. Destiny was kind of the thing that really brought us together. And we would play Destiny like every single day. And he was big in the YouTube scene and the YouTube community. You know, I'm old, I, I don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. I don't know who's who. And he's like, Cog, I'm telling you, man, you should, you know, we should do a podcast. So you should create a channel. So I'm like, eh, I don't know about the channel, but I think about doing a podcast. So we kind of started ILP just as our love for Destiny first. Right. Okay. And it just literally was only a desk and shout out to the original Lords, Lord SWAT, Lord Zero. Those that was the original panel. Right. Whoa. But through the scheduling and things like that, and what you got had to travel, SWAT got a job and everything like that. We basically said, you know what? We kind of need two more consistent panel members. So that's when I said, you know what? 
let me go back to the whole to the essence. Let me go back to the OGs. You know what I'm saying? So I reached <laughs> out to Saab. I reached out to King and I said, look, man, you know, I really think I said, King, I think you'd be perfect for the show. So he's like, all right, you know, I'll give it a shot. And then I literally, if you go back to older ILP, I'm introducing King as a guest before he comes on. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And the same thing, I bring yeah. Saab in. I'm like, Saab, I really need you. I need, you know what I'm saying? The essence of, because basically before ILP, we were Channel 5. I'm like, the essence of Channel 5 onto the show. He's like, B, I got you. And then once we all got together and we started to see, our, again, we all, we all game with each other, boom. We game with each other every awesome. day, every night. We hang out with each other. We're even at it, like uh, he, we've gone to shows together, E3. Like we legit hang out with each other. It's not That's just awesome. video That's games. You know, yeah, it's we not are, no thrown together podcast. Yeah, people this don't know each other. Yeah. Well, yeah. this, this is this is this is what I found to be so incredible because it's a family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Facts. Addict is family. Like, you know what I'm saying? What you guys have over here isn't just like, you know. Everybody getting... think I'm fighting with them. Yeah. I am probably the most. But the, the, the <laughs> How many addicts started? Me and Addict was playing Destiny all day, right? I, I guess I found him through Cognito. I don't know. Mm -hmm. be honest with you. I really don't know. But mm -hmm. I found him, and I'm like, yo, I, I like this dude, right? Mm -hmm. So we're playing, we're playing. And he had this one antagonizing friend, right? And I really could not stand it. <laughs> <What> <laughs> right? Was it Big Bad John? <laughs> no, no, no. John is cool. John, oh, me yeah. and John is cool. John is cool. <laughs> Addict could be a couple guy's people. Name. It could be a couple no, no, no. It's one black dude, and you know I don't want to give color to it. But the reason why <laughs> is because, with the C. Yeah, they yeah, already yeah. know who it is. Yes, yes, I know who it is. All right, and this dude kept going, out, and I said, "Yo, yo," and I noticed, like with my friends, mm -hmm. the ones that I truly love, I'm super mm -hmm. protective of these dudes. Yeah. So it, you're not gonna sit there and keep going in on them. And I just spazzed on them one day, <laughs> and I said, "Yo, yo, yo, for real, where you live?" So, because I'm going to your house, I'm going to get out of your mouth right now. I said, you can stop going at my boy. And it happened another time. And then we got, you know, to, to E3. And mm -hmm. then I met him. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, we are uh, all real cookies. You know, me and him, you know, mm -hmm. the dark side and the light side. Mm -hmm. And we got a vibe with us. So I know people see the show and be like, oh, they be going at each other. No, mm -hmm. not really. That's just us stupid. That's just how they yeah, are. That's yeah, they like this. That's it. Everything is reflective of gaming, you know what I'm saying? And the same thing, it's like, same, same thing with Solve and everything. Like, I know Solve. So I'm on since the third grade, bro. Like, yeah. we've been, Solve, wow. we have been in every class from That's back in the day. This, so is, this is, this is what, again, this is what it's all about, folks. At the end of the day, is family, mm -hmm. is friends, plastic consoles, crap don't matter, skin color don't matter, religion Facts. don't matter, no, sexuality no. don't matter, no. human beings matter. And Facts. this is, this is, this is a story you can't, you know, you this can't be made up. This has to be real. And the mm -hmm. fact that you guys are sharing this is a big deal. So real Thank quick, you. I just have Go to say it. first and foremost, it. Michael Johnson, who is a massive supporter of the show with the mm -hmm. absolutely amazing $5 super chat. Woo! He says, shout out to Boom and the rest of the panel and this impressive statue glass case. <laughs> Behind King David, if that is that is definitely <laughs> Mr. Michael Jack, uh, Johnson. Let me tell you something. Um, I sit up all night, uh, putting the display over here because if you look at the previous podcast, uh, I had the table yeah. out there, it yeah. wasn't here. Uh -huh. Um, and I stood up all night because I knew I was going to be on Boom Show. <laughs> and I, um, that's see these statues over all these boxes over here is actually statues, statues yeah. Right? So, uh, KOS uh, show is coming and you're gonna mm -hmm. see unveilings and stuff like that, but we're gonna go into collectibles. But I did this especially for Boom. Well, I, boom. I definitely Ooh. appreciate it because that is definitely sweet. Let me tell you that, uh, no, no mm -hmm. doubt. But real quick, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this, but I'm gonna say it. Al Hogan is a is a brother in blue who mm -hmm. constantly supports the channel with the massive twenty dollars super Woo! chat and says, "Boom, wow. love the show, man." Yes, I, and I say this to Tim every time: watch your six and <laughs> sign out at the end of tour because that's really what it's all about. But listen, we have a lot of topics to get into, get into, but it. the first one is a good one, and you know what? It's a storytelling one, folks. Listen, we're here to talk about games. But this particular story involves all of us. Now, a lot of people don't know this. I grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. These guys grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. But more specifically, we shopped in the same import shop, and we might have met at one time or another Max. and don't even know it. Yeah. So this yeah. particular topic is called The Greatest Mr. Lee's Stories. <laughs> now, if you want to know about who Mr. Lee is, is this. There used to be an import shop 
uh, where I used to shop when I, in my younger days mm -hmm. on Queens Boulevard. And there was an older Asian gentleman mm -hmm. who, when I first met him, we didn't know what to call him. So we said, you know, I said, hey, sir. He says, no, don't call me, sir. Call me grandfather. <laughs> so that's Ew. what he was known as to the to the crew that I hung out with. We say, "Hey, grandfather," I would call him up. "Hey, grandfather, what new imports came in?" And he would give out the list, and I'd say, "I'd see you in about fifteen minutes because I just start, learned how to drive." And me and my bro my brother Neil Mental and a bunch of our friends mm -hmm. used to go and do our shopping. But you know what? There's one thing about Miss about grandfather, as he was known, is that he was a shrewd businessman. <laughs> <laughs> and you always that. knew that there was going to be a battle when it came to trading your old gains for the new hotness Woo! that was the import market. Now, this is my story real quick about my brother, Neil Mental. Now, I don't know if he's going to be my brother after the story. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. But I'm going to tell it, and then we're going to hear from you guys. You see, back in the days, there was a system called the 3DO. Now, I, I loved it. It had a lot of wacky games, but it also had an open, uh, it, it was basically open to imports. You didn't have to have it modded or anything. It just played imports. So one particular Saturday, we get ourselves over there, we go see Grandfather, and I say to Grandfather, what new 3DO games do you have that just came in from Japan? Mm -hmm. And he hands us two of them. The one that I bought, I, I don't remember what it was but it was good i i enjoyed it mm -hmm. the one he handed my brother neo mental um it went something like this it was called iron angel of the apocalypse oh. <laughs> okay oh, and the name you know because we, we we were we were robotech fans my brother and i right it's we like... were the anime fans back in the days he yeah. turned the box over because there were no demos, right? There mm -hmm. were no online back those days, right? Mm -hmm. So he looked at the back of the box, and I was like, yo, I'm not going to front. That looks dope. <laughs> right? So he was like, okay. Now, back in the days, $80, mm -hmm. $80 to $90 is what an import cost you. Yep. So we pay our hard-earned money because back, you know, when we were growing up, we worked little odd jobs. We worked in Toys R Us. We worked in delis. We worked in Rite Aid. We delivered penny savers. Yes. Okay. I feel like the game back then, you had to rob people. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You, 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 you had to do something. Did. Listen, uh, you know what? Uh, I, my, my, my father would not have had any of that shenanigans. He had to beat the both of us. So <laughs> we, we did it the right way. We worked hard because that's what, that's what he taught us. Mm -hmm. And we brought the games home. Mm -hmm. So we go home and I'm playing the game, and you know, back in the days, we had the rotary phones. You know, he calls yes. me up, and I pick it up. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm like, "Damn, what's going on? Do you enjoying the game?" And mm -hmm. all I hear is silence. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Dan, are you there? Quick, what's what's the matter? Are you okay?" I'm thinking that somebody's choking my my, my, my brother out across the ways, mm -hmm. and he's like, "You, M F." <laughs> And that's all he says. And I'm like, Damn, I don't understand what's going on. What are you calling me an, M an MF for? <laughs> this is the worst game I have ever played. <laughs> Thank you so much that you made me buy it. I'm like, well, wait a second. I didn't make you buy it. He says, yes, you did. You told me this game was going to be dope. It looked dope. I bought it, and it sucks. Okay. <laughs> so he wasn't driving at the time. And mm -hmm. he said, take me back to Queens so Ooh. I can trade this in and get something else. So I'm like, you know what? You right. I, you know, I messed up. You know, mm -hmm. let me take you back to Queens. Mm -hmm. And we went back to Queens the same day. Now I remember what I'm saying, folks. The same day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. We go. Grandfather's there, mm -hmm. and he sees us, and we walk in, and I'm like, Grandfather, listen, this game is terrible. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'll take it back, no problem. How much was that traded back? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. <laughs> So I look at my brother Dan. My brother Dan looks at me and he goes, But we were just here we were just two here. hours ago. <laughs> yep, that's we awesome. were just here two hours ago. Come on, you got to do better. We're in here every week buying games. <laughs> okay, guys, $35. That's best I can do. Yes. <laughs> that's what he said. So my brother and I tucked our tails between our legs mm -hmm. and he took the $35. He bought something else. So yes. two yes. Christmases ago, your boy, Mr. Boomstick, mm -hmm. who loves 
loves with absolute dying would just step in front of a train for him, lie in a puddle of dirty water. <laughs> he said a puddle of dirty water. Okay. That is nasty. Wanted to do something <laughs> special for Christmas. And that's uh-huh. why I bring this up because Christmas is in, a, in in less than 10 days. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to bring up this story. And I have pictures. Mm-hmm. I will post them eventually, just not today, because you know, I still want to talk to my brother in the holidays. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and I found a brand new sealed copy of Iron Angel of the Apocalypse. Oh, you did it. (laughs) And I put it into the (laughs) nicest box. I wrapped it with tissue paper. It had a big bow. It says to my best best brother ever. Wow. Yeah, he he opened it up and his big happy smile. When he got the he was like, Did you wrap this boom? And I'm like, Yep, I sure did. And he goes, This is beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) And he opened up the package, and that big cheese smile went to a frown, and I have a picture of him giving you the middle finger. <laughs> yeah, bro. This, uh, this story is awesome because I don't know if uh, Sarf remember. Um, this and King, remember the Budokan story? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now, wait a second. Real quick, real quick before you get into that, I just Go have to it. give a super ridiculous shout-out oh, yes. to Josette Rivera, who, if mm. you don't know, is Boone's wife, best friend. Oh. All right. Drop the twenty dollars. Says this. Hello, fellow Bronx natives. Woo. Welcome to the Boom family. And as always, thank you for all of your continued support of my dear Mr. Boom. Uh, yes, he grew up in the South Bronx as well. Oh, this is Bronx love. So this, this is, is yes, love. Bronx love. But listen, is, I need to hear about the Budokan story. The Budokan story. I've only heard whispers. It's classic. It's classic. Oh, uh, back then. <laughs> they were all right. You, you're right about Mr. Lee. We also had another spot. It was on 181st. It was in Manhattan. It's 181st. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Which one? no, no. Wait, wait, wait. We, 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 had, we had a we, lot of spots. Listen, okay, we got three spots, but I want Kanye to say this, but. We got a joke. We got a story. We I know where you're going with that. I know you're going with that. I finished that on the, that's on the second part. That's on the second part of the story. Tears of eyes. So the first part is basically back then. This is now boom. Let me give me set the stone. The stage. Set it up. Set it up. All right. This is Sega Genesis launch window. Oh right. wow! Okay. So now we're sitting there. They had you know the altered beats, last battle, revenge of shinobi. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. then there was this title. Budokan. <laughs> it was electronic art. Now, now I want to shout out I met Sin in your chat because he made a good point. People don't understand that back then there was no YouTube. Like Attic has YouTube to go to and see, okay, if this game gonna be cool or not. Back right. then, you judged the game by that box art. That was your only thing. Unless the franchise I love how you guys a- be acting like I'm like 10 or 15. Yeah, you're 10. <laughs> Like, you you realize that. I'm 27, right? Like, oh, I, I, I went through that process too. Like, Yo. you, know, you know what? You saying 27 actually sounds, sounds like I'm 10. Yeah, it does sound like you're 10 <laughs> but, uh, it's not my right? fault. Some of you are older than dirt, and I'm still 27. Okay. I, I'm, the old, did, I'm the oldest dirt guy in, in the room. That doesn't take away the fact that I still was in that process of the you, N64 you were alive with the box. And functional. But the, the point of the matter is that, like you said, Bob, it's like, Back then, Solve would know too. Like you, all you had was the box art. That's if the it. box art looked cool, it drew you in. So we yes, had two sir. friends. Shout out to Lil Eggy. Shout out to Lil Volicon. Right. So we're all trying to get different <laughs> games so that remember we all have the console. We don't have a lot of money, but if right. everyone has a different game, we can all trade with each other and see how the game is. So we like yo. They like yo. What games to get? So we say yo. Go up there, get Revenge of Shinobi. Or get Space Harrier. Those, those, those were the joints, right? So they come back. They go to 181. They come back. And then they both got Budokan. <laughs> so we like, why I got that? We didn't tell you. You know, they get there. He's like, nah, look at this joint. Hey, look, and at the back end front, the box art looked good. Back then, EA had cardboard box art. <laughs> He, 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 he was chasing people. Yes. <laughs> and, that, and, and for all my two Genesis heads, you knew the EA cards uh, because it had the yellow tab 
on the yes. side of the country. Yes, <laughs> on yes. The Speak on it. Budokan, boo. I feel like the person that wasn't supposed to get Budokan, you you were trying to get him to get some whack game. He's like, nah, I ain't yeah, doing that. Because <laughs> Lord wanted to this... grow a brain. Yeah, he, he <laughs> wanted to not, he wanted to not he follow want to a profile direction. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to go by the box art, and he was convinced Budokan was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, Budokan B can be on fire. We got two copies of the game now. <laughs> and I'm like, why y'all bought two? That's the other thing. That is hilarious. When they do this thing on, it was complete trash. Um, yo, it was yo. like Karate Kid, whatever. Go ahead, kid. I'm gonna let you finish. Hey, we, tried, we tried. We tried to make it happen. We tried. They rationale behind it was <laughs> they seen NBA Live. Yeah, and EA had a pedigree, so yes. we knew they was like, you yeah, nah, EA always put out them hits. We mm-hmm. got to go with EA. So I'm like, yo, I say, yo, we didn't send you up there for that. And this is the second <laughs> time that Eggy, <laughs> oh yeah, Eggy's Eggy been known. See, listen, Eggy is an influencer. All right, so he influenced J Real, Mister mm-hmm. High. Mm-hmm. To do something else. That's my. I'm gonna go with my story on that. Yeah, go your story. All right, but <laughs> or, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm gonna continue, continue with the Budokan. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah, when they put it on, I said, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> Yo, it was the most technical tutorial yes. of what a fight, like a real fight. They put real fighting in yes. the game. And it's yeah. not real fighting is not fun. But it had fencing, it had <laughs> what else yeah. it had? Budokan. Man. It was for, straight for up honor, hand to hand combat. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was it was like an expansion of karate champ trying oh, to oh my it god was trying to be too technical for what the Genesis could do. <laughs> 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 Yo, if anybody wants a good laugh, I mean, really Google Budokan, the fighting spirit or something, whatever it's called. It's one of EA's first titles. Oh, it's we, worst title. Oh, <laughs> oh my lord, it was, it was hard. But yeah, that was the Budokan story. So it was classic. We never let them forget. Every to this day, boom, when we see them, we will mention that game. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, that's what friendship is all about. And when you make a boo boo that bad, you know. Exactly. So I, I related to your story when you talk about your boy with the 3DO. <laughs> I, I think I, I think yeah you got King King has great ones because he actually worked for Mr. Lee. You remember that I was behind the counter? They came in one day and they saw me behind the counter. Like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I, mean, I, I needed to get on the inside track. Forget this. <laughs> he took me. All right, this happened with the uh, the Dreamcast. All mm-hmm. right, so the Dreamcast was coming out, and I said, "Yo, uh, Lee, how, how how much you gonna have it for?" So he said, uh, you know, the regular Mr. Lee extra hundred dollar price. Yeah. All right. So whatever his system was, he guaranteed that you was gonna get it. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's a that's a fact. If Lee said you had it, you was in, you were in. So mm-hmm. all you wanted to do was be in on with Mr. Lee. Mm-hmm. So he goes, ah. <laughs> and listen, I'm when I'm doing this voice, I'm not doing this voice making fun of Asians. I'm no, making no, fun no, of no, Mr. Lee. Certain, all right. <laughs> certain way of talking it's it's listen you knew yes. that what you were getting into because he had a bit of a crackle mm-hmm. to his voice mm-hmm. and you knew when he was being serious and when he was playing and when mm-hmm. it came to business it was all business Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> he, he goes he goes he goes oh David. <laughs> I can hear uh, it in the back of my voice. I can hear it in the back of my head. I can't believe it. David, you want that drink cast, David? <laughs> I said, I said, yeah. I said, uh, come with me. Take a ride with me. <laughs> so, 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 now, now, listen. Right. I, was, I don't know this man outside of the store. Okay? So, and my mother always told me, don't ride with strangers. All right. But you'll take a chance for the dream I, I'm like, yo, I said, man, you might touch me. You got to give it up for the dream I said, I said, I, said, I, I got I to gotta go. Um, Just like the same way Sava was playing Red Dead, he had to finish the story. I said, I got to finish the story. So I get in the car with him. Now at this at this, that age, I had I, I don't know how I had so much money, but I was having a ton of money. I had your Neo Geos and all these mm-hmm. cartridges and all this stuff. So he seen me as that money dude that come in and buy stuff, Always right? Buy, right. Yeah, he had you at high esteem. 
Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I go with him. We get in the car. He has a Lexus. This yeah, is the first yeah. time I'm inside a Lexus. Now, if you ever mm -hmm. driving them back then in those Lexus, I was in driving in regular cars. And mm -hmm. when you drive and you hear the noise while you're inside, you hear outside people, hey, yo, what's up? Nah, mm -hmm. Not a Lexus. He closed the doors. <laughs> it was like we was in a concentration chamber. <laughs> Man, this, this is That's really crazy. silent. And he's like, David, you want <laughs> that green cast? Oh, no. Uh, I said, oh, yeah. No. So he said, um, what games you want? I said, well, all the games. Everything they got. Whatever game you get. Ready to rumble. All of that. Pen, so, pen, try Isolon. <laughs> yeah, I love that game. I'm not even front. That was a great game, dude. Everything. Mm -hmm. So we get to Queens. He goes, ah, oh, David, grab those boxes. <laughs> Open the trunk, throw him in there. So we driving back. He go, you play golf, David? Oh, I said, nah, I don't play golf. You never play golf. No. I'm like, what does this got to do with games? <laughs> I would like for you to be in business with me, David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the proposal. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, he was trying to do the sales pitch. Yes. So he wanted to show me luxury life driving, too. With yeah. this, all oh. is possible, David. <laughs> so he, goes, he goes, listen, listen, I give you special pride for Jim Cash. You work for me, and we uh, become partners. <laughs> you, you, you manage, and you watch over. You make sure nobody comes in, do anything wrong, and we become partners. I said, ah, that's great, man. I said, for a drink, guys, hell yeah, I'll be the boss inside the store. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an hour, man. One of my greatest friends, rest in peace, Ricardo Melendez. Yeah, shout out to Rick, man. Shout out to Rick. Because of that store and that position. If I didn't get behind the counter, I would have never met him. Exactly. And I would have never blew Cognito's mind when he showed up inside the store to go purchase something. And see you on the other <laughs> side. But what's crazy is because he knew the power of King. He knew that when King came in, if King bought something, that was a cosign. Like, King was our right. cosign back wow. in the day. He had the money to go test these games out to see for us if it was worth it. And then not only on the import scene, like, whenever something would come out ahead of time, we'd be like, oh, wow, PlayStation looks amazing. Wow, Turbo Graphics looks amazing. So we had a heads up before the yes. American release. Yeah, and, I do. And so King was vital and, and that's what mr lee so everything he did we gravitate so he's like i gotta get this guy you get this guys to co-sign on this we get sales yes yeah that's Yo, that's a, a second, freaking bro. awesome I, I, I story gotta dude one thing real quick jonathan be in your chat saying yo king why he gotta sound like the asian michael jackson <laughs> <laughs> he was the smoothest he was a smooth cat dude yeah. he let me let me tell you something see you know again you have to you have to imagine this he had a way of seducing you to buy his shit. Yes. Okay? You walked yes. in. He looked at me and my brother Dan, and he said, he, he used the Jedi. He's like, you're going to buy this. Yeah, and my brother, bought, pull it over. Yes, yes. my brother bought it, and my brother, he still has a bit of hatred towards me because of it, and it's Mr. Lee's fault. Do you hear this, Dan? I hope you're listening, brother, because it's Mr. Lee's fault. Don't blame me. I didn't do it. He did it. He uh, he. He seduced us with his his power yes. that we didn't know he had. But, but yes. listen, I'm gonna tell you all, this: all of you people, all you people who who think GameStop is ganking you, oh, no, everything no, no, no. Ga everything GameStop learned, they learned from Mr. Mr. Lee. Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 th there are executives in GameStop that were like, "You listen, Mr. Lee, I'm forever gonna be in your deck because I bought games from you, and now I know how I'm gonna rip off the people." He was he was GameStop before GameStop. Oh and my god! Like real, you said, real, boom, he had that influence. He had that he, influence, dude. He just yeah, had yeah. a way of getting you to, uh, to to relieve you from your money without actually yes. robbing you. Yes. Real yes. quick, I just have to do two quick Go shout outs. Spoonman with the two dollar super chat. Woo! Thank you so much. Every oh, dollar counts. He says head. so many sexy my mofos head. in one place. It should be illegal. <laughs> Ow! Thank you for that, sir. Thank Next you. up, a very good friend of mine, D Diaz two nineteen, another Bronx native, with the ten dollars oh, wow. super chat. Texas um, in the building. It, it's Texas. actually thanks to that man that I'm Ooh. currently married to my wife. He wow. pushed hard for your boy. Boom. That's so big up. thank you for that. He says, "Congrats, brother. Continue to live." your dream wow. now Dope. also real quick 
Mad D uh, DZ Gaming Mods. with with the ten dollars super Woo! chat. Thank you so much. He says, "Love the panel and the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, my brother. Polish. That's my it Polish is, lord. Yes, yeah. and I and you know what that that episode. Listen, Thank you. <laughs> I listen to you guys' show, and you got to understand. You see, I'm I'm retired and I'm home. So out of respect for my wife who still works, mm -hmm. this house, she comes home to a hot meal and she comes home to a clean ass house each and every week. So while I'm cleaning, mm -hmm. I'm listening to the Iron Lords podcast nice. along with so many others. Nice. And it just makes the cleaning go by. And I happen to listen. I do that particular episode had me in tears, <laughs> literally in tears. But Lord you know Dodgy what? himself. Oh, yeah, man, man, man. Man. <laughs> if we I, thought we did some shicey stuff with some games over here, yo, like, Mods is a, he's a real <laughs> one for what he was able to do. To oh get my those god, Dude, especially oh, with, 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 with he ha he had his version, the Polish Mister Lee, if I recall yes, correctly. Yes, yes, where he was like, "Yeah, come over to this. Uh, yeah, what's in this hand is good, and what's in this hand take out a lunch." Yeah, meet you at the barracks. Dodgy gaming. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be honest, though. I think out of all of us, though, mm -hmm. I think myself and Kai Basu were the ones that were the most willing to go into the grimiest places for some yeah. games. Like we, like we went, Kai, because Kai Basu was, the t he's, all, he's still the type that he'll just look some random stuff up and be like, oh, this place has mods. True. This place has, a, you True. know, um, this place has a, a copied mm -hmm. games, you know, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and he, so then he said, come on, let's go check it out. And I'm like, all right, where is it? So he'd always act like it was an establishment. Yes. And nine times out of ten, it wasn't an establishment. <laughs> <laughs> it was like some uh, apartment in some yes. I mean, like yes, <laughs> I've been with Kyle Bach. downtown on Thirty Fourth Street, Thirty Guy in the Tower. There is yes. the Tower. There, there was a guy um in Harlem. Harlem. He had us in Queens. We, some we've been to Brooklyn. To like we've been some wild. And then you know the thing is, you go into these places, right? And then. You know, you knock on the door. The dude comes to the door. The dude, like, in his in his drawers and a dirty wife beater, like, you know, oh my god, ashy feet, like, you know, and, and then he leads you into a room in the, to the back of the apartment. Like, mind you, why are we continuing to follow this man into this dirty, grimy? What we won't do for gaming, dude. Yes. And the dude proceeds to hand me uh, a, a copied version of a game that that wasn't out yet. So I'm like, all right. Fine. <laughs> I just want to know how you guys are alive. I, yo, yo, I listen, have no I idea. Yeah. Listen, uh, Lord Kaibatsu almost got me killed a million times. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm the one driving, right? I feel like at this point, it's your guys' fault. You keep following oh, him into the, into it's the bus. gaming. It's drugs. It's drugs. Right? It's, it's, about drugs. drugs it's, it's like hustling. It, you, you wanted that new fix, man. Right. That, that, that whole, when you think about like the gaming scene in New York in the 90s and like early 2000s, all of it goes back to those those stores in Chinatown. Yes, the yes. Chinatown yeah, fair, the Brooklyn Bazaar, Brooklyn yep. Bazaar, JNL yeah. Games, Penguin yeah. Village, like all the, ar the arcade Sovereign scene and the hardcore Village. scene. Yeah, that yeah. that that whole scene goes back to all of that, and all of that means that you're going into grimy places. <laughs> That's yeah. all it means. Like, yeah, facts. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, I I could tell you this. You know what? This the way that the the, the the greatness that's going on right now, this cannot be fabricated. Uh, the stories are absolutely classic. Uh, and we could probably talk the entire two hours. Yeah, we gotta get the show going. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, you know, again, out of respect for you know everyone here, I want to first and say thank you so much for sharing your incredible story. Absolutely. It is, it is bananas um, how... You know, we all, even though, like I said, we may, again, I could have met King way back in the days because I, I remember I probably the did. dude yeah, behind the counter. Yeah, I remember, oh, yeah. but I don't know who he was. Yeah. And that just goes to show you how small this world really is. But mm -hmm. I want to move on to the mm -hmm. first big topic. Let's right go. now, we all know that the PS5 is coming. In fact, Sony themselves has confirmed that they are working on it. We know that so we know what Sony has done this generation and there's no denying that they put themselves in this position but that's not what we're going to talk about right now. Okay? <laughs> in three videos mm -hmm. from one of my personal favorite YouTube channels, the Comic Book Cast showrunner at Armenis oh, on Twitter and that guy's a good dude. He's yeah, legit. Like 
has been saying on the show for quite some time that Sony would eventually be bought out. And mm. Variety.com has reported that Apple will, in fact, buy Sony in 2019. It's mm. a proven fact that Sony is failing in their electronics division and <laughs> Sony <laughs> are not doing well. The mm. PlayStation division is the most profitable for the company, but cannot keep up the company from sinking. That mm. is true. Okay. Now, there are two very big talking points to this potential, pun intended, game changer. Mm -hmm. Definitely intended. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Apple has been rumored for quite a while, as we all know, to wanting to get into the gaming business. Mm -hmm. Buying Sony rockets them right away into the number one position. But how would this move affect the video game scope? Mm -hmm. Secondly... And even more important and interesting is that the Spider-Man IP will immediately revert back to Marvel right. because the rights are not transferable. Right. And this has been confirmed. Being a huge Marvel fan myself, and I know many of the panel members are Marvel fans as well, how big would this be to the MCU and what would happen to films like Venom? Would they be wiped away, or would Kevin Feige use what they've already done? Mm. Now, now, Cog, I got to go to you right away on this. First of mm -hmm. all, if Sony is bought out mm -hmm. by Apple, and it looks like that's going to happen in early 2019, mm -hmm. what does that mean for gaming? I think for gaming, it's, it'll be interesting because we all know, you know, with Sony's history, the last couple of years, the gaming division has truly been the remaining profitable division. And that's what, kind of what they've doubled down on, whereas the rest of their divisions were failing. So to see them kind of get that injection in the arm would be interesting. The key will be then how will Apple kind of double down as far as their infrastructure with the rest of Sony products? How does that work? Do they look at that as not being profitable? Do they have them just focus only on the gaming division? It's a lot of questions. It's a lot of questions. I will say this. I mean, it makes sense from a business standpoint for them to jump in. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I know Sony would like to shot in the arm. So yes. we gotta see. We gotta see if it happens. As far as the MCU thing, that low key is what I'm most interested in. <laughs> and, and for me to have Spidey out under the control oh, and back to big, MCU dude. is huge. That to, that that freedom where they don't have to kind of sign off on Sony to say, hey, can we allow him to do because don't get me wrong, the fact that homecoming exists was a magical deal. Oh and yes, get, yes, yeah, yes, all absolutely involved. Yeah. But at the same time, to now give that free creative control, you know, back to them, MCU, and, and have him appear whenever and however they want in any capacity they want, huge. And to be honest, no disrespect. But they could throw venom in the bushes, and they could really, really do, <laughs> do <laughs> venom the way he was supposed right. to be done. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not, not this separate one-off. Like have him included with the correct story. I'm good. So I'm actually okay with this. If if this rumor turns out to be true. Well, listen, uh, real quick before I get to King, because I have to go to him because he is the master of statues. We know what he's about, right? We know <laughs> we, we see it in the background. But mm -hmm. real quick, Danny. And Dino with the massive $10 super chat. But you know what? That's not important. It's what he says that's even more important. He says, boom, I listen to all your shows while delivering the mail. This show is amazing, yeah. and the laughter is infectious. No. Here's a little money so you can continue to buy everything. Dude, thank you so much. That is greatly appreciated. And my man, mm. Aiden Williams, massive supporter of mm. the show. With the twenty-five dollar super wow. chat, he says, "Love the show, brother. Like always, keep up the deadly work, and this panel is fire. I can feel the bromance all the way here <laughs> in Australia, <laughs> all the way across the world. Thank you, Shout Aiden, out to the for that. Under, greatly appreciated, awesome. King. Listen, Spider-Man is one of the most important characters in in comics. Let's just call that." Uh, what 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 Insomniac was able to do on the PlayStation is nothing short of absolutely magic. Magic mm -hmm. in video games happened this year. Mm -hmm. But how dope would it be for literally because of a because of a deal somehow or another Kevin Feige would now gain full control with without the ridiculous nonsense of Amy Pascal. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> all right, making ridiculous statements about how Spider Man was going to be in and be out and be in and be out. Mm -hmm. And it would revert back to Marvel. At this point, Marvel now owns every character due to the Fox deal. Mm -hmm. Secret Wars would be <laughs> inbound. And they could do the proper black suit Spider-Man and Venom mm. King. Take it away. All right. Let's 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 first and foremost. First and foremost, this all ties into our Lord and Savior Phil Dominic. <laughs> oh all right. Oh um, let's 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 understand exactly how his uh positioning and pushing and forcing people to understand. Mm. I want now I, I'm I, I know we are not supposed to rip a box. But mm -hmm. I want to know all those Apple haters. You know, you I hate Apple. I don't want nothing I'm, to do with Apple. But I, I love me a PlayStation. I hate oh. to interrupt you for one second, uh, King. It, do you think that's the reason Sony's not having an E3 next year? Well, yes. you know what? We're actually going to get into that because I actually yeah. have some some notes about that that I wrote mm -hmm. in at the last minute. And that, dude, that's a great point. There's a lot. There's a lot of suspicious activity here, and because of my law enforcement background, I'm gonna put on my detective hat Ooh. and break it down. Let's go. All right. So, Phil Dominus has actually scored the coop, right? Um, because yes. no longer is Sony your Sony. If this happens to go down. Mm. Is the Sony name just wiped away? Do they use that as an asterisk? Is it Apple Sony? Is the next <laughs> PlayStation 5 <laughs> Apple Flash Sony? Like, all right, oh my God. Let, let's get past that. Let's get to let's get to the MCU. Let's get to all these wonderful statues all playing in harmony. See, because my problem before was how mm. Kevin Feige had to sit there and manipulate and give you great content with mm. working around things, yes. like putting Ghost Rider in a TV show because it was a failed movie, but he mm. needed that character to grow mm -hmm. by putting Daredevil and yep. all the edgy stuff on Netflix because mm -hmm. he needed to cultivate a ground base to keep this moving over here to get that great content to grow mm -hmm. so while he's working with the big dogs over here they have masterfully worked around all the parameters that was built around them and by being purchased by Disney it gave them mm -hmm. an influx of cash yep. mm -hmm. when they purchased Fox don't forget Comcast was being haters. Comcast yeah. was out here trying to put yeah, money on yeah. the in a sock. Oh, them in the bushes. Oh, I hate it now. Oh, man, you guys are so you guys are ridiculous. They tried to get the IP the haters. Like, yeah, I don't like, like them. them. I don't, I don't like, like them. what they were doing. They was messing with my fun. Mm -hmm. They was messing with my, my soul was being messed with. All right. <laughs> so okay, now you say Kevin Feige has the infinity gauntlet. If this mm -hmm. happens to go down. <laughs> and he gets Spider-Man no longer because we had fears that oh man is Spider-Man gonna be there? Like mm -hmm. after he died in, in, in the last movie, y'all really thought like oh man they, they killed him because he was going back because Venom was successful and yes. they knew what was going down. The Speak on it. theories was out there. Yes. Now you're gonna get that black suit spider if this goes down. If this goes down, because that's the last piece of the universe, you're gonna get a Spidey verse like this movie that this weekend that we're gonna go see with my family. Right. You're going to get an actual Spidey verse that's going to have Captain Britain in it. That's yeah. going to have Captain, Captain, Captain Britain. Son. You know the Alpha Flight. These are characters that, if you're not a comic book head, and I'm a supreme comic book head, all mm. we need now is Universal to get up off of the Hulk. Yes. Release the Hulk, yeah, Hulk. and stop Hulk. playing around with him. Yeah. You know, let us make a movie and stop messing around. That's the one piece we don't have that piece, and I believe that's how you can get a world breaker Hulk. Oh, I, I, oh my God! We can Ooh. actually get good movies. This it was monumental. When you put this in the chat, my my heart said, "I got to dig up facts. I got to check this out because." <laughs> I really wanted him to stay there, but we knew as insiders, not the casuals, mm -hmm. as insiders and in loving this culture because this culture is still connected to video games. It's all one culture, nerd culture. Right. We were always fearful. Yes, absolutely. Of, the, of these movies, these Sony slash Marvel movies that's predominantly produced by Sony being too good. We wanted Venom to be good, but we wanted it to fail. Mm hmm we wanted Spider-Man to be good, but we wanted it to fail, so they have to stay with us. That's how right. I feel about Fantastic Four, my man Silver Surfer. I was Silver Surfer in the worst way, bro. Yeah. So now that that deal, hopefully now, you know, that they failed with that back in the day, and now that, that they got a uh, Fox under, under wing, in the wing with Disney, we can get the correct version and include it in the MCU, because that's what's popping right now. You're that talking about Galactus with a body? 
Yeah, not a yes. cloud. Not, not a like, cloud. Like, not, yes. not, 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 with a head and some hands. Mm-hmm. See a thieves body? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see a thieves. <laughs> the bodyless cracking. <laughs> well, that's that's my take on it. Oh, um, I, I honestly hope it really happens. So we but the IPs, and I noticed that you put this also in, in, in the um mm-hmm. in the notes. Do we think that they throw the IPs away? Not the IPs, but the uh the continuity of the established universes or the movies that they were making. Do we feel that they throw them away? Mm. Uh I honestly think that happens because the new mutants movie and the X-Men movie has mm. been put in limbo. Yeah, the, the 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 Fox stuff is there's no way there's no doubt that, that Kevin Feige is gonna wanna just completely pretend that those don't exist. I'm talking about I actually meant, meant more towards like Venom. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, Venom just released it. They currently already can't, they're doing Morbius. Uh, you know, they have yeah. J, uh, Jay Leto, uh, 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 you know, that to play the Joker is going to be more, uh, you know, Morbius, uh, which I think is a great character. I don't think he can handle his own movie per se, right. but, uh, you know, it, it's gonna, it's certainly going to be interesting. And, and I think that, um, you know, the Russo brothers who we saw up at the VGAs, uh, those guys, are basically uh, living, breathing gods when it comes to how do you how you produce a movie, a comic book into a film, and uh, they've already said that they already have ideas for Secret Wars. So I, if if this if this happens early nineteen, and that's what the evidence is is, is going, it looks like it's going to be like a, a, the reason why it hasn't happened yet is it's a fiscal thing. You know, mm-hmm. wait, wait until March and the fiscal year, and then you know April, new fiscal they they buy them out. The, there's no waiting. There's no lawyers. There's no, you know, I have to sign the paperwork, but I'm going to, I'm going to play coy and, and run away. So you can, I can't sign it. Spider-Man, the IP automatically reverts. Mm-hmm. So they can immediately start saying, yes. okay, you know what? Venom, everyone else gone. Let's, yep. let's start from the drawing board. Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. And that's how the symbionite suit is born the way in the proper manner. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But Sovereign, I, I want to get your take on this, dude. Listen, this is, you know, uh, you know, uh, Sometimes when you do these shows, uh, you kind of you can you you could kind of shoot yourself in the foot when you bring up movies because it's not always the the hottest topic. But for this particular one, mm-hmm. gaming and movies merge together in a way that you have your peanut butter with your chocolate. It just tastes mm-hmm. so good. <laughs> right? So Apple, it looks as if this is going to happen. In your opinion, how big would this be for gaming and more importantly, the MCU if Spider-Man does come home? So one question, and I don't mean to be the one to, to pee in the snow, but like, <laughs> I, I, isn't it just Sony Pictures, though? It's not you know Sony what? proper. Because if it's Sony Pictures, that's if it's Sony proper, then yeah, there are a lot of ramifications for gaming, right? But I think it's just Sony Pictures. Right, you know what? And here's the reason why I brought up PlayStation. All mm-hmm. right, simply because we have no confirmed information that it's one of the other. Mm-hmm. So I looked be, into this. I, be, I, I so I wanted to make sure. So I just threw it out there as a hypothetical because mm-hmm. Apple does want into gaming and they just don't have the power to have their own gaming, you know, box, if you will. To so be honest, that's why I thought of this. To be honest with you, like I've I mean, it's probably just, you know, the Sony picture entertainment division, right. but I feel like if if it was strictly money wise, they would make more money off selling Spider-Man back than selling the whole division. Mm. I would I would agree. Yeah, I, I actually because Marvel would pay out the nose for it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, might, yeah, I mean I, that that is true. They would try. They would probably make more money trying to get rid of Spider Man before this deal went down, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see. For gaming, obviously the ramifications would be huge because now all of these IP would sort of be open to sort of the highest bidder. And I think you know what we've seen what it, what Insomniac did with Spider Man um, as sort of a, and and as it stands now, like Spider-Man is now going to be a franchise on PlayStation. That's just the way yep. it sort of works out. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Welcome to Xbox. <laughs> so, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so that would be interesting for other things. Like I, I love Spider-Man. I thought the game was great. I would love to see some other stuff. I really want to see a, a, a Hulk game. Oh uh, man, man. Yeah. Ultimate Destruction. Ultimate Destruction is, is an amazing good. game. I, I think see Spider-Man that. being as successful as it was and selling as much as it was, 
you're going to see a lot more of those high quality comic book games because now people see that i mean obviously there's always been a market for it but people no one wanted to fund it because no one knew if there was an actual market for yes, it. yes correct right. well said right. dude well said so Good i have point. my personal favorites my captain america daredevil i would yes. love to see really mm. amazing oh, games that part of the segment for the movies i think obviously spider-man going back home is where he needs to be as well as the rest of the marvel characters like listen all of these Sony one-off movies, they they they're sort of they're cash they're, grab, dude. They're I cash think. grabs, and they're taking us back to the early '90s with the terrible fl films. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's that same thing where it's it's a hit or miss thing. I don't care, you know, what, however you feel about Disney and their ownership of Marvel and how they handle things and how they sort of churn out movies, Star Wars, uh, you know, Marvel stuff, whatever the case may be. These are the people. This is their property. They're going mm -hmm. to give it its just due. Yes, it it should not be in anyone else's hands. So, regardless of how you feel about you know the evil empire or whatever, they need to have these properties back, all of them. Yes, mm -hmm. and they're being controlled so they can have people. They can have because uh, listen, you you have to call it like uh, like you see it. Spider Man's Rogue Gallery is as important to yep. Marvel. As is right. Batman's Rogue Gallery is to DC. End of story. Mm -hmm. End, end mm -hmm. of story. No questions about it. They, they both have the deepest, and I'm talking deep, when it, uh, you know, bad guy roster, you know, mm -hmm. each one of them. And you know what? To have access to having guys like the Prowler. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you don't know who the Prowler is, that's Miles Morales' uncle, P.S. Mm -hmm. by the way. And he is important. a big deal in the later comics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? So to have access to all of that, it's a big deal. But I, I, before we move on to the next topic, you I want to get... need a lie, though. I know what the real thing is, what you guys want with these games. You want a, a Batman versus Superman game. That's what's going on here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would take a I would take a Marvel versus DC Ooh. a Capcom style. I don't want that to happen. But Ooh. but you know what we we we're gonna we're gonna come back, we'll to, come the, back. To, to the Marvel thing in, later on because mm -hmm. we need to talk about now. You see, you said uh, you know um, Sovereign, you brought up a good point. You said, oh, boom. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you absolutely sure that it's just that it's Sony whole and not Sony Pictures? Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's a good question. But mm -hmm. the reason why it was brought up is, and, and we're going to segue mm -hmm. right into why I think it's more. Okay. Mm -hmm. After spending a significant amount of time on Apple buying Sony, mm -hmm. let's talk about how Microsoft could take the lead in the next generation before it even starts. Yes, Sony is in the lead now, but there have been some very strange happenings in 2018. And let's go, let's break them down. Sony doesn't attend Gamescom. They back out of Paris Games Week. They cancel PSX. Mm -hmm. They show nothing new at the VGAs. And now the cancellation of E3 2019, I call shenanigans. <laughs> it, 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 it would make, I don't think it's the case, but it would make sense. I mean, think about this for a the second. The fact that they didn't go to E3, there's got to be something up with that. There Listen. has to be. Mm -hmm. Right now, again, this is this is a Microsoft topic, and I and I I just want to say this because I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down. Mm -hmm. There have been many missteps, as great as the marketing has been for Sony, and you know if you listen to me, how much I love their first party games, how much I applaud their marketing, their prowess is nothing short of dominant. Mm -hmm. All right, and end of story. But here's where I I, I want to turn this over to an Xbox thing. During an interview at E3 2018, and I did this for King, Phil Dominus Spencer <laughs> laid down the gauntlet and had this to say about the next Xbox console, and it was strong. The same team that delivered unprecedented performance with the Xbox One X is deep into architecting the next Xbox console. He said on stage on June 10th, we will once again deliver on our commitment to set the benchmark for console gaming now there have been a, there have been a chance to not only make project scarlet more powerful than the ps5 but also come in at a lower price hence the multiple skews rumor that have been making the rounds in the gaming media mm -hmm. let's also not forget that microsoft doubled 
their first party studios in 2018. Game Pass is a huge success. And the industry leading Azure cloud service is the backbone of mm. everything going on. In an interview with business insider Phil Dominus Spencer <laughs> said that this would be how they would use Azure to reach the two billion gamers. Mm -hmm. And this is what he had to say. We have 50 data centers in different parts of the planet. Billions with a B of our dollars of investment in building that out. It allows us to accelerate our growth in this space. And he said this in an interview. He also can, the article also continues. It's very apparent that S Phil Dominus Spencer, because I really <laughs> like saying that, has a plan to make sure that Microsoft will be in the driver's seat for the next generation and reach the two billion gamers. I have to go to, uh, you know, I'm going to go to the leader of the Iron Lords podcast and get your take on this, Cog. I mean, this, this is some serious information Sony has dropped the ball listen mm -hmm. they, they're in the lead it take no, again I really want to I really want to just stress mm -hmm. how they are in the lead yes but just as Microsoft was in the lead mm -hmm. it seems like they just might have fumbled at the goal line <laughs> <laughs> I see you at a king have been in the same uh, schooling lately yes. <laughs> <laughs> right I, I do have a question that you guys, I do have a question that you guys might know mm -hmm. let's say it's not the gaming division it's just that one division uh, mm -hmm. if they did that the spider-man license would still be returned back to sony right i mean not sony uh Mar it would yeah, revert, Marvel. revert to marvel so but it, I, I don't think it would have it would really i don't know if it would hurt the next spider-man game i to be honest with you i don't know that's well, a that's right. a really well, that's a really good question. question yeah yeah i mean listen man, there's a lot to unpack here Boone. you dropped a lot of bombs on it you know i'm on the mindset that playstation 5 i mean play sony is gearing up for playstation 5 and yes. They may have the mistake I agree that they may have made is uh we use this <laughs> terminology we can, excuse my language, they may have bust early. So yes. to speak. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the thing is, you know, they had this fantastic lineup, right? For the PS4, you know, and it just seems that for whatever reason they may have miscalculated ending the generation on time with correct content. So by them not being there, obviously it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And we it, it allows Microsoft to have the floor to themselves. Yes. And back to your point now with how they're gearing up, we know about the studios, that's huge. They doubled their first party output. We know about Project Cloud. There's right. a lot of rumors going on on how they're attacking this thing. Now, what I'm hearing, I want to shout out Jess Gordon, who we had on the show on Island Podcast. Good I want to shout out really good, good dude. dude. I want to shout out Brad Sims. I want to shout out Cobra. There's a lot of insiders that are kind of pointing to what I'm about to say, which is it seems they may be going the multi prong approach where you have the maybe the disk list or the um, uh, Scarlet Cloud system, right? right. The on one the that's 150 low, bucks. Right. That may yeah. be the low end entry point, right? To get people who don't either have that money, don't want to spend that much of an investment, or go the mobile route to get those gamers they may not have reached. Then I'm hearing there is a skew that is going to be comparable to the PlayStation 5, right? And then the, the newest rumor is that there is a, almost like an elite tier. <laughs> yes. So that, that there is no doubt in my mind that Phil is not trying to lose the power power narrative yeah. with the well he said that in an interview that the, 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 the that the the box will right. never be behind in power will never be behind. so the vibe i'm getting is a multi-prong <laughs> approach they're trying to get everyone the game the casual oh, game sounding like an, a villain over there <laughs> yeah. so I, can't, I can't wait to get what he has to say because yeah. that, that 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 laughter is is is, oh, yeah. is frightening a little bit <laughs> I, mean, I can already tell you how his conversations go. You know who who you, who you got to think for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, in my in my opinion, this approach it, it, it's pretty sound. They try to get all their bases covered, and there's in my mind the X proved to me that once this is under Phil's regime and it's his vision. To me, that's the Xbox One we should have gotten. Yes, right? I agree. That's well said. The, 
true vision. So now that if you if you just look at what we have right now in that form, and then you apply this to the next generation, I think that we get that same level of an X, a, a high end version, which would be the yeah. expensive tier, the, the premium king tier. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the one that's gonna be the boombastic specs, the Zen, the Navi, you know, all the tech terms, and, and, and just blowing that thing out the water for the people who may have the 500 plus, you know, to spend. Well, you, you know, can sign me up right there with King because that version is probably going to come with the Elite 2.0 version. I'm calling right. it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I got, man. That's what I got. I think well, that's that, how that was it. amazing. So, King, listen, mm -hmm. I have to go to you right away because you you have a lot to say. I could just tell. I've been watching <laughs> long enough to know. Listen, um, everybody thinks I don't. I don't know why they think I like Phil. Let me give you why I like Phil. All mm -hmm. right. So you don't know why everyone thinks you like no, it. <laughs> the, the, the reason why see, people have different reasons, right? And they might say that uh, that I'm an Xbox stand or whatever. No, um, I actually love an underdog. All right. So if you ever thought that Microsoft was um, in in the lead or looked at as the champion, that's not true. Probably they won a fight. And they have never truly dominated in consecutive years. Yes. Now, Sony has become accident champions. And I gave you the reason why they were accident champions. <laughs> because every last step that they made was, it was a, it was, it was, it just happened to work out for them. Like they had good luck. You know, like they really had really good luck and they seized the opportunity. Now, it mm -hmm. takes a, a person to see the opportunity and to seize it. I'm mm -hmm. not taking anything away from them seizing opportunity. Every step that they took, every calculation that they made, they did it intuitively to the point that it seemed like they can never lose. It will never be a chink in their armor. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, come to find out that the divisions was failing as far as uh, TV sales and stuff yes. like that. They got fill up yeah. itself. Yeah. Uh, the cameras... So it got to a point where Samsung overtook in that direction yes. was selling their screens, right? You got to look at the company as a whole. So they were actually in the red uh, when it came to uh, this PlayStation 4. And the fact that it sold saved them. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. They, they were at the at death's door. Microsoft fumbled the ball, like Cognito said, though, at the goal line, <laughs> but Phil was not in charge. So this is the reasons why I appreciate Phil. Mm -hmm. As a strategist, what you try to do is you try to take away the strengths of your opponent. Mm -hmm. And you try to like. elevate your weaknesses so mm -hmm. that they become a strength. Right. So we all know that everybody's going around saying Microsoft doesn't have any games. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a large base of Japanese games. If you actually go to the marketplace, they're there. If you actually go, you have mm -hmm. to look. You actually have to look for them. But you know what? It, we, yeah, that, that's been the running joke. Xbox has no games. But yet I have 800 on my 14 terabytes. <laughs> Just like, saying. It makes no sense. But it, it has no games for you to, to, to say that you can point to that say this is game of the year type of stuff. I feel you. Okay. I get let, it. Yeah. Let, I get let's, it. Let's do that, right? You say 14 terabytes? Yeah, I run 14 terabytes off my Xbox One X. That's correct. Ooh. Yeah, like what, what I got 19. Why are you why are you acting like this? Hello, real gamers <laughs> got real, you know, backing behind them. Stop that. Don't don't act weird. Yeah, well, he said every 14. time we talk about terabytes, yours gets bigger and bigger. Last <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 time I think you said eight. Now, no, now it's 19. I, told, 19. You said, I feel like you said 19 because it was it was higher than 14 and it no, was lower than 14. I, and I told you I had purchased uh, uh what was it uh eight terabyte and I had another uh I think it was another seven sometimes something that we got mm. extra with Microsoft and some stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I told you what happened. And then the system, when you buy the X, it comes with, uh, what is it, one terabyte or something. Mm -hmm. So that added on. That made in 19. Because I had like 18 and then the 19 for the system. Whatever. Um, who cares? Anyway, I know, it's a lot. <laughs> People running around with terabytes. Why are you caring about terabytes? What's weird? That's weird. Don't worry about the terabytes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what, what Phil did was he sees that there was talking resolution in the beginning. Take away that resolution crap, right? Yeah. All right. So now that the power narrative has swung back in this, he's not going to let that go. All right. You're we not. know that for a fact, too. Yeah. We know that. He said it. He's not mm -hmm. going to let that go. Price point. Now, how can I get uh, this system into everybody's house in, in, a, in a reasonable price point? 
oh, sell a streaming box that can go up to 1080p and with a decent frame rate at a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. That those people, those Christmas so, stocking stuffers, huge. yes, that's Dude, huge. It's that's the casual market that Sony took on right yes. 90 million consoles later mm -hmm. 70 plus percent of those gamers are the ones that buy three games per year understand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. no one's taking away what sony did i i like i said i don't want to keep repeating myself i applaud what they have done but mm -hmm. they are the casual market console why mm -hmm price right entry yep. price yep. you could you know during black friday the spider-man bundle 199 mm. i mean dude you cannot beat that and you that's good on it. sony that's yeah. good on them. absolutely so no, absolutely then you got the system that's in parity with the with you know spec wise these are the same systems all right to be yeah. honest with you spec wise you know microsoft may come in with a little different specs a little bit higher specs here or there mm -hmm. but spec wise these consoles will mirror each other with the internals. As yes. you said, you know, the Navi 2, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. GPU, all that stuff will will basically, uh, the Zen 2, they will look close to the same, all right? Mm -hmm. So now it comes down to content, what Phil did. Get his roster in check. Yes. Go buy these, these divisions, these development companies, mm -hmm. and let's get this in check. This is what I like in a CEO, in a boss. Mm -hmm. The boss understands we lost. Mm -hmm. Yep. You embrace the enemy. He got them close. You saw the visualization. They was on stage with him. <laughs> All right. I, now, I, he, I do like that 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 gif of him looking. Oh, at. that gif is hilarious. He's, he's, yeah. he's looking to the side, and, 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 and someone wrote in, "I'm gonna get you, MF." Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> so, and he wants to win. He wants to be. Everybody wants to be that last alpha. That dog. Y'all y'all thought he's he's so nice. He lulled them to sleep like Michael Jordan does. He befriends you on the court and murders you on the court and wins <laughs> and then sees you. And Are you saying that he pulled a Mr. Uh, Lee? He pulled a Mr. Lee. <laughs> exactly. He, he, he has went to the, Mr. Lee's finesse. <laughs> <laughs> David. David. You want the dream cast? <laughs> Layden. 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 <laughs> Come, Reggie. Come, Reggie. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all are crazy. So now that y'all see it happen in front of your eyes, you know that I wasn't you know, playing around. When I was calling him Phil Dominus, when I was telling you 100% that I'm riding with this guy because I've seen the moves happening before it happened. And it happens how I'm saying it's happening. Now, I don't want Sony to go anywhere. I've witnessed too many companies not. die. Yes. All right? Don't, don't get that mistaken. But I would love for Microsoft to actually yank the crown off of their head <laughs> and actually be the bully that they were supposed to be. Because y'all kept saying, oh, Microsoft got all this money. How come they're not in charge? Mm -hmm. Now when they start acting like a boss and buying everything, what, are they going to buy everything? Yes. <laughs> Damn right, yes. Well, listen, real quick, Sovereign, before I get to you, I have to do a couple shout-outs here. First of all, Easy Money 4K with the dope-ass $20 Super Chat. Easy Thank money. you so much. He says, sending love from the West Coast IE area, the origin story of the Lords was fire and had me rolling. Boom. Dude. Keep up the good work, brother. Thank you so much. And once again, Michael Johnson, the superhero, swings in with another $5 Ooh. super chat wow. and oh, says, brother. I am not a PC guy. I'm a console gamer. So I will always buy the most powerful console available, no matter the platform. I want a powerful console. Yes. And power does matter. But Sovereign, I want to get your take on this. This is, the, you know what? I mean, look, e gamers love underdog stories, right? This is why we, 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 you know, like even though the Chargers are not my particular team. I'm a Steeler guy. I've been watching the Steelers since '76. Mm -hmm. But to see Phil, uh, to see that Phil out there and what he did to the Chiefs the other night, what he's doing on old legs, you want to see that kind of a win. You want to see that guy hold the the, the the Super Bowl, you know, the Super Bowl uh, mm -hmm. trophy at the end. And it's the same thing for Microsoft. They have been down the entire the whole generation mm -hmm. so it would be really fantastic and for me personally as an xbox 
you know, specific gamer. Like I support them all, but mm-hmm. I love the Xbox for so many reasons. What are your takeaways on the possibility of Phil sliding in there, doing all these back end mm-hmm. moves that people didn't mm-hmm. remember? No one thought he was going to do all of this. He said he was, and people had doubts, and now it's coming to fruition. I mean, I think f- what Phil has done that we've appreciated as Xbox gamers is that he's been forward facing with everything, right? Yes, well said. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes that's hidden ever since, you know, really ever since Scalebound and Fable Legends. And like, it seems like he's learned this lesson. Like, look, try to be as as upfront about everything with the gamers and the gamers will still be there and they support you as long as they see that you're continuing to improve the platform. And he's done nothing but do that since he's been there. So I think that's that's huge. Obviously, there's things he can't tell us up front. There's things behind the you know the, the machinations and whatnot that are going on that we don't know about. And that's right. great because I like I love being surprised. But I do think that just telling being clear about what the vision is, play I mean um Xbox has always had trouble being clear about what they want, the, what their vision is until Phil sort of took the reins and said, OK, we need to be we need to clarify a lot of stuff here because we're confusing people. We're pissing people off, you know, and and little by little, he's been able to do that. It hasn't been perfect yet, but it, it's getting there. And the fact that he's forward facing about it, I think we all appreciate it now. Does that mean that they ha- he has some some megaton deal that ha- that we haven't heard about yet? Who knows? I I would hope so. That would be great. Um, I'm just excited about everything that we've already know about with the with the with the new uh, studios and whatnot and what's coming down the pipeline. I'm excited to see what that stuff is. So if there's anything more, that's just you know that's icing on the cake for me. Now, when you talk about what PlayStation has been doing up until now, with the not going to E3. Pulling out of uh, of Paris Games Week, you know, eliminating PSX for this year. Uh, it's an obvious push towards having their own event for PS Five, right? Of course, and that's and I and I think it, when you when you look back, it's been you don't really see the big three announcing a console at E three anymore. And I think to be honest, I don't quite understand why. Mm. It, it is shocking because the, the the world's eyes are on that event. That's for world, sure. but, but you know what. It, uh, go ahead, Sov. I'm gonna let you. Finish. I think I think it's just a, a mentality change. I think what it is is people realize they want to control the message themselves, and it's not it's not about not. I, I see what you're saying as far as visibility. You're correct. Like you definitely want the visibility that E3 will provide, mm-hmm. but I think these guys want to control messaging because you know I like sometimes you you up on stage and like wait did he say we can't play online you right. remember like with the Xbox one launch it was so many questions and stuff like that people things get misconstrued and right. I, I think it's just about control but continue so I, I see what you I see where you're going though but I think I think even if if you are at an E3 like okay then maybe try maybe think about going to Nintendo route and having something pre-recorded so mm. you don't have those 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 sort of mess ups on stage that, that could get misconstrued and all of a sudden turn into like this mm. big thing that people are talking about. Mm. Um, I just think oh, the, the eyes of the gaming world are on E3 at all yeah, times. You're right. you're you right. know, sometimes the meat year over year and I, you know, I don't mean to, to point fingers necessarily at the media, but mm. it feels like they, they try to diminish its mm. importance year over year because it's becoming less of a media show and yeah. more mm. of a fan event. Good point. Good point. It's and and the fact that it's a fan event. Have you looked last year? They almost eighteen thousand people went to E three. So people are paying attention to E three. Mm. A lot so of do, it is. So do you think it may be just a what I'm thinking? Wait, just a miscalculation on time that they're timing the end of the of this generation. Mm-hmm. Like they just didn't transition. Probably like again, maybe they shot so early, right? It, it could be because the thing is, I, I, I'm interested to see how they shuffle these late generation games. These yeah, Last of Us, where are they going to show up? Yeah, that's Ghost important. of Tsushima. Because right. again, like, do you do you run the risk of having next to nothing in 2019 mm. to hold all of those games <laughs> for the launch of PS5 in 2020? Because that's mm. a big risk. Because you just they have millions of people, right? Yeah. But you ha- you just have millions of people who bought a two hundred dollar PlayStation, like Boom mm-hmm. said a couple of weeks ago, and that haven't been in a PlayStation ecosystem till now, and mm-hmm. are expecting. Obviously, there's games they haven't played yet. They they're just jumping in now, but they're expecting right. more life out yes. of their system yeah. one year before they're telling them they got to buy another one. Mm-hmm. So it's going to 
be interesting what they do with their last few big releases and which ones they push, which ones. And, and again, the way games are made now, they don't necessarily have to push them. They're just going to be on. They're just going to be multi generational. It'll be on a PS4. It'll be on a PS5. But again, you want that big launch boom when you get something. You don't yeah. want to. You don't want to say, oh, it's been on PlayStation 4 for a couple of months, but now it's coming to PS5 at launch. Like, it, it, it doesn't resonate as much as, like, a brand new game, brand new IP coming out day and date with that brand new system. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do because it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to just remove yourself from E3. Um, you know, we thought it might have been a mistake for Xbox to announce the Xbox One X at the end of a conference Remember where that? they just talked yeah. about the S, and, and it turned out to be yep. great out to be great i still yeah. think you know I, I can understand from a money perspective them saying you know what it's cheaper for us to, pr to put on our own thing than pay the esa this insane amount of money to be there mm. but the the eyes of all of gaming are on there there's no better mic drop moment than right. a mic drop moment at e3 look yeah. at the game sharing video with with yeah. Shuhei and Adam Boy, it's like Dude, oh, that, that dropped the that, that, that was won the, the generation. That won the them. generation. It was over. It they really they, did. They, they couldn't recover from that point. Between well, Boom that. said it right when mm -hmm. see he or uh, being in his detective ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're selling a company or you're selling some parts of your company, you're mm -hmm. trying to lower the 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 cost of the overhead yep. on certain things. Yes. Right? So you want stuff to fall in line. You don't want to make any major purchases. When you go to purchase a house, they tell you during the closing part, do not go out and destroy mm -hmm. your credit. Don't go do nothing stupid. Don't go yes. buy a car. Don't don't do anything. Sit still until it gets done. Sit still means don't go to E3. Don't make no a major spending over there. Don't make mm. no major announcements over there. Until it's financial. Back. I we really think it. this acquisition part thing has a big thing to it. And mm. as, as much as I joke around and I say they scared of Microsoft, no, they're in company. Come on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like he said, to that point, now the tea leaves are starting to make sense. Mm. They might be selling a part of the division and they don't want to get any outlandish expenditures or anything to yep. mess with that sale. That's just my no, take. It, 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 it makes, it. it actually makes perfect sense. But listen, Attic, I want to get your, your your point on this. I think it's very important. You know, listen, we, we've all been talking for the last 15, 20 minutes about how Sony has dominated, uh, how Microsoft has the potential to dominate. Well, what are your takeaways with, you know, all of the evidence that has been pre you know presented in regards to, the you know, what Sony could possibly, you know, what could happen to the company, and more importantly, what Microsoft is going to do. I mean, listen, they have learned that they can't sit on their laurels. They understand that the L is done. There's no, there's no erasing it. They took the L in this generation. End of story. But they are positioning themselves to get the big W in the next generation. And you know what? Even though, like King said, the power is probably going to be on point, it's going to be the content. It's going to be the services. It's going to be the overall you know, outlook on the company. And right now, Microsoft seems to be just going up and just hitting those threes. What do you take away from this, dude? I mean, I, I think this is strictly just the, uh, you know, the movie. I don't feel like, I mean, maybe that uh, anyone would sell. If Apple offers them enough money, like Sony's like, we don't need PlayStation anymore. It's the only, <laughs> it's the only division that's making money for them. And at this point, you got to remember. At the end of the day, I feel like if Sony was to sell that division, they would use the whole entirety of Sony to uprise the entire price. So if you want, if you want, you know the the PlayStation division, you're gonna have to give me a little extra, extra, and buy this whole company. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, again, it's it's right now, it's pure speculation. Other than the fact that we do have, uh, you know, reported evidence that Apple will be looking to buy Sony in some facet. We don't know how much of Sony. It could be just the movie division. But again, like King was saying, uh, pulling out of all of these video game shows, it's just. It's very fishy to me, to be honest. Mm, mm, interesting. It is interesting, man. We got to see how this thing's going to play out. I mean, they're clearly gearing up for something. But like you said, it could, like King said, could it be something financial as well that is, you know, restricting them from doing what they want to do? And they're just, you know, kind of gearing up their war chest, so to speak. We got to see. It's going to be interesting. But we know for sure Microsoft's coming. There's right. no doubt about it. Right. 
All right, well, listen, real quick before I move on to the next topic, two big shout outs. Face 23 BKNY, which means that he must be from Brooklyn. He Brooklyn. says my the dude. most successful consoles are not the most powerful. The, pow the power narrative in the beginning of this gen was mostly brought up because Microsoft's competitor brought it out at a cheaper and better system. And you are correct with that. And real quick, mm -hmm. with uh, Z Black Rider, my very good friend, who is, uh, if you should not follow in this dude, you're missing out. He is definitely a quality community yes. member with the $5 Super Chat. And Thanks. he says, Ooh. a wonderful Saturday with Boom and the Lords. Screw is on. Next box will be modular. You all listen. Mm. Well said, dude. Now, listen, I want to bring up a next topic, and I think you guys are going to dig it. Let's go. Nintendo's boss says attending <laughs> E3 2019 is a no-brainer. Mm. Promises more innovation at the show, and based on quotes from Reggie Fizeme, mm. it appears that this is a quaint. Uh, this is a quaint shot at Sony. Mm. Now so, uh, we're getting messages. That's confirmed now. What mm. do you mean? No, I was joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Innovative technology. We're getting messages. It's confirmed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Uh, Petty. Now, the article that I uh, the article uh, that I pulled has has it saying, "Are E 3s days numbered with a question mark?" It's a question people have been posing for years, but speculation has ramped up following Sony's announcement that they're pulling out of the big gaming conference. Well, according to Nintendo, Nintendo's uh, president, Reggie Fils-Aimé, E3 will remain important to Nintendo moving forward. And here's a direct quote from the... Uh -oh. ...engagement mm -hmm. than CES or Comic-Con. Boom, or other boom. you went out big. he's back he's oh back. you went out um when you started and uh i yeah, think you, you might need to start again that stuff was like that yeah i yo i thought i died i thought i died i we lost you for like maybe yeah. five five ten, five yeah, yeah when you started you know what you started i'm gonna restart like a whole episode of spongebob to be honest with you well listen real quick before i start this over again because i think it's an important thing i have to shout out the 155 people watching this wow. show live. I cannot thank you wow. enough. This is the first in many of the uh, of, of this particular type of content for the show. This is really mm -hmm. opening up in a big way. Thank you so much for the amazing support. But let me read this quote again. Mm -hmm. According to Reggie Fizeme, he says, E3, those five days is the opportunity. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, where he oh, that. now he's got a double version of him. So, uh, yeah, oh, that's that's what it, yeah. Uh, it's where he read the text. He, he, he done I that shadow quality. I, I think it's Sony. Sony trying to sabotage you, man. Yeah. They want to send the bots up. They're like, we gonna stop it. him for all this slander. Yeah, you know what? Listen, am I coming in a clear? Clear. Yeah, you, you come yeah. in from the clone now. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the clone is talking because the is, other guy, Shadow Clone Jitsu, put you out. Yeah, you know what? This <laughs> is this is this is what we talk about. This is this is the fear of every uh showrunner. Browsman said he this must is. have Comcast. <laughs> no, I, I, actually, <laughs> I actually have cable vision, but it, 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 <laughs> now you good though, boom. The, the clone is gone, and it's just right, the, clo now. the clone is gone. Listen, the, I, I listen, I'm gonna say this, okay, before I get cut out again by myself. <laughs> my future self is somehow stepping in to save me from <laughs> myself. You. It's like, you're about to say something kind of stupid, thing. and he's trying to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's, like that, it's like those times in movies where like we just got to go back and stop that one thing that one <laughs> paragraph stop the one paragraph you know they don't the want world. that nintendo paragraph they don't want it, <laughs> right. it well, listen i'm gonna, I'm gonna say this you know with, with reggie coming out on this on this interview mm -hmm. uh, i thought personally it was a shot at sony because mm -hmm. you know they they came hard at reggie and they said you know e3 what is it important to you mm -hmm. and we know that my, we know that nintendo does their own thing and you know what? I mean, think about the, the balls of this company. A couple of E3s ago, they had an E3 with one game. 
Yes. One <laughs> game. Yes. Okay? Do you think Sony or Microsoft could have pulled off that shit? No. no there's no freaking way that that could happen. Only so, Nintendo can pull off half the shit they pull off. <laughs> listen, you know what? I, 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 I got my first yeah. Nintendo when I was 15. My mom surprised me That's with my That's the reason they get away with this. Yeah, we and you know what? So old, old men like me continue to buy super mario for the 17th time and you know what if they come out ever if, if they ever release the virtual console i will be buying the same super mario 3 or the same super mario world that i bought 17 times before with a big cheese smile on my face here holding out hope yeah i don't blame you man like uh, pokemon let's go is just yellow remade so that means i've Pretty bought much. this game three times yes i mean oh. listen nintendo you know what w with this particular company they have a certain Disney magic yes. in the gaming world that the other two just don't have. Mm -hmm. And it's because of their first party. It's, be it's because they hold their characters so dear to them. Right, like when you look at, like, um, for instance, when I, it's not a, it's not a topic, but when you talk about Smash Brothers Ultimate, that is the biggest love letter to anyone who grew up on the NES days, and 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 it's crazy how the kids who don't who didn't experience the eight bit, the sixteen bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the you know the GameCube, you know what I'm saying? They don't they didn't experience that. We did. We're the old guys in the room, mm -hmm. so we appreciate even more. But it still it transcends age, right? They they're they're one of the few companies that can do that. So I really want to talk about. I want to discuss the importance of E3 2019 for Nintendo. I, I like I said. I, I think this was a shot at Sony. Uh, we saw them all standing there together on e on the VGAs. I thought it was a magical moment, but it didn't have any substance to it. It was just three dudes. And the way Phil was looking at the other dude from Sony, <laughs> Mr. Layden, it didn't look good. And Reggie, you know, when they put that that seven that that, that three twenty p <laughs> on his face, savage, I was just savage. I was hurt. I was hurt from the man. I just want you to know, like I've been a shit of a bit of a tea. I'm like, Reggie, how are they do? How are they gonna do you? I like would that? love to see like their reaction, their live reaction when they do these memes. Like, I can tell Reggie, you something. I can see Reg Reggie looking. At that I was like, see, I know I shouldn't have done that. Like I know I shouldn't have done that. Reggie <laughs> is a big man, and yeah. he looks the type. Even though he, he he's a lumbering man, he looks the type that once that door closes, he's karate kicking desks. <laughs> <and hell. laughs> Computers are being broken, windows shattered. So I think he was pissed. But you know what, Cog, I want to get your want to get your take on this. Mm -hmm. Is E three dead? Because you see, that's the one thing. You guys have been to E three. Mm -hmm. I have only looked from outside in. It's on uh, my particular. Um, that you got to come with us, man. You got to come with us. You got to gotta come to the Iron Lord Castle in yeah. LA, brother. Oh my God! Yeah, so we, we, we got a space talk, for you. We are gonna talk privately because there's some, some. We are gonna meet in person. Facts. We're gonna hang out, eat some food, and Facts. who knows? E three may be in. And I tell you right now, my my wife is listening, and she <laughs> she she she's, she's putting the notes down. Let me tell you something my <laughs> wife josette is the biggest supporter of this channel Hello. she was the first sub i ever got and she Hello. has purchased the best collectibles i've ever, i didn't even know existed so she is wow. the real deal so she, in her in, in her book she's writing this stuff down and mm -hmm. she will like i said if we if, we, if E3, let's say 2019 happened, mm -hmm. she would surprise me with tickets. Here you go. So, oh, that's what's that, 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 that's, that, said. Yeah, 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 she's the she's the real deal. But mm -hmm. more, more importantly, Cog, seriously, mm -hmm. how important does this tell you E3 still is? I think it's still important. I think I think we have to look at it as E3 is evolving. I don't yes. think it's yes. going away. And I still double down on what Lord Sav was saying is that you know you're gonna get the most eyes and engagement at this event so you want to be there you know what i'm saying now it's not like the past when you know it used to be more of a trade show or whatever you know excuse the cars coming by listen listen we, out here. no listen <laughs> we we're, we're broadcasting from our little cribs we don't have <laughs> studios at least not yet not yet <laughs> but no nah, man it's, it's one of those things that like i said i think it's evolving i just think it's, it's a change i think you know time is going to tell if this was a mistake by sony to not attend because at the end of the day you noticed immediately when they announced that nintendo and phil jumped on it immediately we, we're going to be there we're gonna be there. <laughs> they learned that from Sony, though. Yeah, they learned that yeah. when Sony, when they said that, you know, how would you share your disc? 
They learned that. They learned how to be petty from the petty masters. So <laughs> I'm told you, Phil's petty is hanging, and it's out there. Y'all better be careful. They're very petty. They're very petty. Yeah. To make sure that they let you know. They let the consumer know they're going to be there. But again, I don't think it's dead. I just think it's changing. I think that what will happen is kind of what you're seeing, like the big three, like as far as Microsoft, like Nintendo's doing their own thing as far as the directs. Microsoft say, hey, come to our theater. Then you have EA <laughs> doing EA Play. They're still there, but they're controlling the narrative with their own yes. show. Because yes. let's be real, like it's not cheap to kind of set up shop at E3 and these booths and finances and things of that nature. So I think it be, as it becomes more open to the public, they, the, the big guys will be there. The big uh, you know, the third party developers, they'll be there. Publishers will be there. You know what I'm saying? But it's just changing. And I think that's what's going on right now. Well, listen, that was w- very well said. But I, I have to go to King. Now, before I get your answer, <laughs> King, I have to say something because I think you're going to appreciate this. Mm-hmm. If we all recall, and I think we all do, there were some MFs in the community with tape measures. Last mm-hmm. E3 about space. Mm-hmm. Right? Talking yep. about Microsoft lost space. They're out there with their tape measures. They're like, you see, they lost three inches. That said, the E3 sucks. <laughs> right? So now Sony isn't coming to E3, and guys like Greg Miller be like, I think it's bold. Mm-hmm. I think that it's, 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 it's genuine. I think this is, they're going to drop A bombs, right? No one from the Sony Pony community, and I'm, I'm not talking about the players. <laughs> I'm not talking about the Sony players because I'm talking about the toxic community, and all communities have their toxic, you know, fanboys that just ruin it for everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of gaming. I go where the games are, not where the mm-hmm. box is. But is. how important do you think E3 is still in 2019, King? It's important enough for me to already got my ticket to get out there. Um, so nice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a thing that it is evolving. Like Cognito said, we know firsthand from when it was uh, just a media event to now open to the public. Do I really like it open to the public? No, I do not. All right. I'm just going to be honest with you because I don't believe that there's enough elbow room for that. Right. It's, when it's you're tight in it, it's from what packed. I heard. Yeah. But Microsoft taking, uh, and opening up the Microsoft, uh, studio center, that across the street that was an experience within itself right but there was also still on the show floor now nintendo has a very huge presence there Mm. sony has a huge presence there those are the chances where people who don't play vr can get a chance to touch your vr this is where you actually sell these games that people are iffy about and i just wanted to check that out that nino cooney let me check that out um Mm -hmm. let me stand on this line and let's see what's happening Mm-hmm. Or, or you, you get a chance to see a show about a game and maybe you can go and purchase a system or a controller for your system. It's being present because when you're absent, anybody can assume anything. But mm-hmm. when you're present, they know exactly what you're doing, what you're about, and how you're going to come forward with things. Mm-hmm. And I always say taking people for granted. Yes. I see this media spinning it. Had Microsoft said we're not showing up to E3, mm. oh, they lost. The generation they're done. It's hell. Mm. It's going down in a handbasket. And I, I've watched media. Shout out to Brap mm. because Brap is oh, good dude, man. Yes. Really, yeah, shout out really to Brap, dude. Yes, he's opened my eyes to the media biasness that has uh, gone down. It's it's tribalism. Yes, once once yes. they understand who the leader is of the marketplace and let's not get it wrong sony is the the market leader they skew things in a way that it's Sony friendly yeah all right and when you read a headline or when you get an article it's sony friendly in the terms of that it's really close to biasness Mm -hmm. and microsoft is trying to change that biasness from the inside to turn it out to get the media to get on their side. Right. Now, when that happens, then you can actually see an actual change. But that's not happening right now. Sony not being there is a huge mistake. Nintendo doubling down, Microsoft doubling down, it's telling you that we are not forgetting you guys. We love you guys. We will be there present for you and accounted for, and we will have stuff that will wow you. In the absence of these people that are leading, that, de- that decided to leave you alone, mm. We will be there for you. I ultimately see Nintendo and Microsoft taking that step 
forward and gaining those missing people yep. that felt shunned and, and, and left at the altar yeah. with Sony. I don't care yeah. what it's show a huge they risk. With it's a huge risk. And, and yeah. one thing, just to double down on King's point, boom, you know, one thing we got to realize is that it's a risk to alienate your base and not go to the biggest event. It, and especially just are. at least being present on the floor. Right. Uh, yes. it's, one thing, it's one thing to say they're not going to do a show, but to not be there at all is a huge deal. And another thing that, you know, King, Sov, Attic, we all know is that one thing about Microsoft, they know how to do an E3. Yes, they, they do. They know how to cater to their base. If you've ever gone to a fan fest, it is the mm -hmm. most, you know, industry company friendly kind of event. They're, they, they're, the guys that are making million dollar salaries are out there elbowing it with the fans. Elbowing with the fans, yeah. meeting with the fans. The Phil is out the bar, the Greenbergs, you know what I'm saying? The Bill Still with all these they're randomly just show up with like boxes up. of pizzas and stuff. That, like, that is huge to the mindset. Again, if you're not, like King saying, if you're going to not have your base represented, you know, what happens with what happens? They sometimes they tend to look at who's actually there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, know, so you know why I love Larry Herb so mm -hmm. much? Why I defend Larry to the death? Mm -hmm. Larry met me one E3 in a fire pit in the middle of the night. <laughs> and we talked, he gave me a hug, handshake. Mm -hmm. Oh, he from the Bronx. He went to Fordham mm -hmm. and we talked. Yeah, we 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 talked from that, right? Mm -hmm. The next E3, he saw me. He yells out from across the room, yo, Bronx. Yeah, facts. Wow. Facts. wow. I Great. said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I ran over there, took a picture, and I said, I know you're kind of busy. No, 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 come on, man, let's take this picture. Mm -hmm. So anything that anybody says about Larry or, or about these execs not really caring, not remembering, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. That made an impression on me. It so resonates. I will always have it it back. resonates yeah. with the fans. Yeah, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, no, 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 listen, that's, so mm. let's, let's let's get your take on E3, dude, because uh, you've been there, right? You know, so mm. you've seen what it what it means to have a presence in the world's biggest gaming show. Uh, listen, I, I get Gamescom is big. I get that XO was big. I get that, uh, you know, Paris Games Week has a huge following, but there's nothing like E3. What are your takeaways of, of the importance of E3 2019, but more so E3 moving forward? Well, I think just it being Nintendo making a statement like that says it all. Yes, well because said. Nintendo, more than anybody else, marches to the beat of their own drum. Damn right they do. Mm -hmm. And you have the top Nintendo guy telling you, hell no, we're going to be there. Like, <laughs> what, is, what are you thinking? And if they've been, I've read articles saying that, you know, Nintendo's presence is, is changed at E3. It's not what it once was. Dude, I don't know about you, but I, you haven't been on the show floor then. Bro. Because, the, listen, they dominate the mm. floor. Be, forget about what Sony does on the show floor. Forget about what Microsoft right, does on the right. show floor. You're when right. you go to Nintendo's area, it's I like you're it going was. to a Nintendo theme park. Yes. yes. I've seen it. I've never Jeez. been there in person. I will one day, though. You know, mm -hmm. they have... You right? can't walk two inches in front of you. Oh, no, yeah. you can't. Like, they the have lines. kiosks everywhere, oh. the lines, and the fact that, that like, everything is, is, is themed, and everything is so... And regardless of how many people and how stuffed it is, it's always very organized. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, so they have their direct. Then they sit there and they talk about specific games after the direct. So that's the live portion of stuff. This mm. is all up on a stage that's elevated above everything else. Remember, then the last couple of E3s, they've had the Nintendo World Championships there. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. they have. And that's still mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they have the biggest floor presence at E3. So they're not right. going anywhere. They understand, they understand the power that E3 has over mm -hmm. oh, just over fans. Mm -hmm. Like all fans are gonna be watching that, which is why, like I said, this the, all this stuff about E3 going away to me is fake news. It's yeah. fake news. It doesn't make any sense. Absolutely, and it, and, it, and it doesn't make any sense even coming from journalists because mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, although the shift in E3 is making their job harder to do because mm -hmm. there are more people, more people and fans there, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that the, that. The fact that there's so many more eyes on it means mm. that you're going to be getting big announcements. Everybody mm. wants to go there. Everybody wants to, it seems to showcase there, right? Obviously, the money is an issue, and people are finding their own ways around that, like Microsoft going to their own theater, EA doing their own stuff away. Obviously, it's expensive. Mm. 
But there's no denying the fact that that week you want to be in or around that area to mm-hmm. showcase your stuff. I personally think that the re- the majority of the people you see that say you know, E3 doesn't, I will say it doesn't have the effect it used to. And that's just mm-hmm. because social media does a lot of its job, but that doesn't make it less relevant. Exactly. It, it, it's not uh, like before when you're like, oh, we didn't get to see that. We have to wait a month to get a video to, sh- to see that. We'll talk about that another time, but Dragon's Den and Yonkers, I used to go to Gary to pay that $20 for that tape. For that boot. Uh, Leg tape, yeah, yeah you leg tape to CE3, and, man. And the funny thing is, the majority of the people I see that's you know complaining about E3 and saying it's not, it's it's the media, and I think that uh, the biggest reason why a lot of them are really coming on that is because if you look at the year that they let the fans in, mm-hmm. like yeah, they were there pissed. was a lot of hate. They like, were pissed. They were not. Uh, there was people, you know, even YouTubers saying it takes me forty minutes to get from one side of the Coliseum mm-hmm. to the other. Uh, you know, everyone was saying it was too crowded. I'm like, look, I get it. Mm-hmm. You yeah, get I it, like, Look, I, I, I get it. I do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, so, so they don't they don't have this money coming in. Then when they have when they you know like Microsoft pays them and EA pays them, they don't have those big wallets anymore. It was like mm-hmm. they gotta you know they gotta come up with that lost revenue somehow yes mm-hmm. yeah. yeah real and quick I, think- boom, I, I just want to ask and solve i want to ask you a question zero's in the chat he's like it's a good point but he's saying do you think that this is classic history repeating itself with sony maybe showing hubris almost like towards the start with the ps3 era I've always said it was hubris. I'm using your words, so I'm learning. You know, you know, <laughs> you know yeah, shout out, Brad, right? <laughs> but, but um, I mean, that goes back. You know, I have my theories, my conspiracy theories about, hey, it's their turn to mess up. <laughs> these things, yep. these things ebb and flow in a certain way. And it it's always the market leader or the person, at least with the most mind share going into a generation that mm-hmm. shows a, a, a sort of like dumbfounding amount of hubris and 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 is able to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. They have victory, they have victory in their hands and they do the most boneheaded thing. And we mm-hmm. saw that in 2013 with Xbox. We saw mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, you know, like I, I've always said, it feels like a conspiracy theory, like these guys get into a room together. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, all right, so this generation, you're gonna mess up, right? And you're gonna let us shine, and then next one, we'll, we'll stumble and we'll and we'll let you rise back up, and, and we'll mm-hmm. just all all be constantly in this ebb and flow, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's not beyond the realm of possibility they could really, really mess up. Yeah. Um, but it is uh, to me, it, it feels like hubris because once again, if you want to not go to a show, don't go to Gamescom, don't go to Paris Games Week. Mm-hmm. Make it three. Yeah. 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 you're the yeah. big three again and even if, if you're a third party publisher or something mm-hmm. like that you don't want to go to e3 if you be decides hey i don't want to go to e3 the it bad might be part understandable of, the bad mm-hmm. part about it they didn't go to, to e3 uh they're not going to e3 next year they don't really go to gamescom uh they canceled right. Paris show this year they canceled psx this year they didn't go to the vga really yes, so i'm sure. just like what are they doing? Yeah, oh, I don't it's, 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 yes, either like not yes, too much at TGS. Yes, either. and 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 they're Japanese companies. That's even more surprising that they're not a bigger presence in the Tokyo Game Show for sure. Yeah, it, is, it is surprising. And, you just, and, you yeah, just this, is, this is this is uh, you know I've heard a lot of people use this, so I'm uh, you know and I'm not copying, but this is arrogance. This is the arrogant mm. Sony. Mm. I hope not. <laughs> well, listen. You know what? We're 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 closing in on two hours, right? And normally, I I run a two hour show. You know, my wife is 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 hanging out in the other room watching TV. You know, and I don't I don't want to spend I don't want to take too much time away from her. But I am gonna I'm gonna say this two things real quick. Face twenty three BK New York dropped another five dollars. He has a question for the panel, and this will be like a one word answer. Mm-hmm. He wants to know what your most anticipated game of 2019 is. You can only pick one. So I'm going to go first. Well, what, what happens if my game has more than one word in it? Well, no, one <laughs> word, more than one word is okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's, a, that's awesome, dude. Wow. For me, out of everything that's coming out, the hype level, because I played 1,200 plus hours of it with my brother, mm-hmm. who I may not be my brother after this show. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. And if you're listening, I love you. Is a division two because mm. I love the division one. I with all its faults, my crew from mm-hmm. the Bronx, right with you, 
We, we did some bro. damage in the dark zone, and we didn't we didn't rob nobody. We were there. We were the protectors of the oh, dark zone. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Cog, I want to go to you. What 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 is your most anticipated <sighs> game for 2019? Yeah, you got me on the spot. Boom. Um, anthem. Great pick, dude. Great pick. Uh, uh you know, uh, King. What, what about you? What what's your most anticipated 2019 game? The Resident Evil remake. Oh, mm. yes. oh, you know what? When we first talked about that, he said, I don't want to play that game for the umpteenth time. But I know once he saw it, <laughs> once he saw that, oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah it's it, not the same game. It's, it's not, not the same game at all. It's, 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 you know, and I should have picked, picked that. that if but, anything, uh, that's the I way to make a game. Take it. I was I was. Sitting there praying, I was like, oh, "No, because I know he likes that game." I'm well, like, I mean, look at look at my avatar. I'm wearing the the the, 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 the Leon S. The Leon Kennedy. Kennedy yeah. That's my man. I'm a I'm a Leon dude too. So when I saw and your listen, avatar, listen, I was like, "I love." Boys. And if you don't know, S is for skills. Woo! Just so you know. all right. Woo! So, uh, uh, Sovereign, I want to go to you, brother. What is your most anticipated game 2019? So until I get a definitive release date on The Last of Us 2, okay, it's, it's gonna be Sekiro Shadows oh, Die Twice. Ooh. That looks dope. Yeah, that looks really, really good. Yeah. And last but certainly not, Attic, what do you what do you what is your most anticipated game? Pokemon Go 2. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Pokemon, 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 let's go to <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I, well, technically, the new Pokemon's coming out next year, so you can go and sit down with that comic. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it'd have to be, yeah, I'm actually playing it right now, but uh, it'd actually have to be Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, uh, that's a good one. That's going to be a solid title. Like I said, as an Xbox fan, I've played the originals because mm. I have them on the PS4, so mm. I'm not as uh, you know uninformed as so many uh, Xbox gamers are going to probably be. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, listen... No, like I said, normally it's a two-hour show, but I almost feel like it would be a, a, a crime. And I'm a, I'm an ex-police officer, so I cannot commit those. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one in one more in here. It's gonna take the episode a little bit longer, no problem, but because Sovereign is such a big fan, mm -hmm. and he was devastated that you know because at first he he was gonna miss today's show. Thanks, you know you know he had family obligations, and family mm -hmm. comes first. You know it's mm -hmm. just it's just a gaming show, and you got to put family first. But thankfully mm -hmm. he's here. Yes. Panzer Dragon 1 and 2 are oh, being man. remade. <laughs> and I lost it when I heard this news that Sega has answered the hopes and dreams and prayers of every fan. Earlier this week, Sega and the company named Forever Entertainment announced they would be co-creating and co-publishing remakes to Sega Saturn's shooter Panzer Dragoon and its sequel Panja Dragoon 2 Zeewee. The first game will be made available before the end of 2019 if all goes according to schedule. So listen, even though we're going a little out of order, Sovereign, I have to go to you because I am a huge Panzer Dragoon. <laughs> I played the S out of it on every console it ever released. What are your takeaways on the fact that we're going to get a redo on, on these two classic Sega games? Panzer's my heart, man. Like, I know it is. That's why I went to you when first. It, when it comes to like memories of my Saturn when I first got it, um, obviously I had Panzer, I have Virtual Cop 2, yes. and I had Daytona Strong. USA, oh, as well man. as the the, the whack version of Virtual Fighter, but we got Virtual <laughs> Fighter two afterwards, so you know, fix that. But um, but that Panzer it it showcased what the system could do in sort of pseudo 3D, right? Obviously, yeah. it wasn't the 3D powerhouse that the PS1 was, but it it showcased that it could be done. And then yes. um the the big leap from Panzer One to to Zui was abs was stunning, like was absolutely stunning. Panzer Zui it probably goes down as one of the best on rail shooters ever for me. In gaming, yeah, well said. Mm. So the fact that these that Sega is helping to remake this is is very is heartening to me because when I saw the other developer, that's where my uh, where my <laughs> where, you got a little where, nervous. Yeah, I got a little nervous because these guys, Forever Entertainment, they brought back uh, Fear Effect. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, not not so good, dude. Yeah, Fear Effect Sedna was a turd, and <laughs> 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 get it, get it. 
Um, but I'm heartened because just because I don't think they're trying to remake the wheel here. They just they they're cleaning it up. Right. They're gonna make it look pretty. They're gonna make it look pretty. Um, <laughs> if you wanna, if you've never experienced Panda Dragoon and you want a taste of that, if you're on Xbox, pick up the uh OG Xbox Panda Dragoon order. It's now oh, back compact. It is Xbox fantastic. One X enhanced on the Xbox One X. It is a beautiful game, and it gives you a great idea of what a Panzer Dragoon game is. Um, and what also makes me excited is if this is if this is successful, hopefully that paves the way for the a remake of the best Panzer game ever, which is the <laughs> RPG. Yes, absolutely. Panzer Dragon Saga, one of the best RPGs ever made. Period. One of the most expensive games currently <laughs> on <laughs> eBay. Let, let me let way. me give you. A, I'll give you a Mr. Lee story when it oh. comes to Panzer Dragon. <laughs> I had I had two sealed copies of Panzer Dragon Saga. Two. Oh, wow. In addition to the open one that I played. Um, and when it came time for the Dreamcast, I you know I, being the you dumbass had, you, you that had, I am. That. <laughs> Being a dumbass that I am, I'm like, all right, I can get rid of these. Whatever, I'll get them back later. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So I went to Mr. Lee and Panzer Dragon Saga when it launched. Well, as a disc game, because this wasn't a cartridge, it, as a disc game, it was like four or five discs. We're talking about it still costs somewhere in the realm of eighty to ninety dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. So yeah, I went to Mr. Lee with two sealed copies, and he goes, "Oh no, 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 no! You need to open those." I don't oh. take I don't take sealed games. Crime against <laughs> no. humanity. It's wow. actually illegal. It's actually illegal. Yep. So he's I'm like, what? He's like, but these are new. No, 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 no. Not not here, then not. They <laughs> he so he opened them, uh, right? Well, I, I opened them. I opened them and mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, fine, like whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, yes, $25. <laughs> See, that's classic Mr. Lee right there. I was like, you know, he's the greatest hustler. He is a, he is a, well, I mean, he, 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 was a, he, he was an OG pimp. Yeah, right? he really was. This man understood the science of depreciation <laughs> in front of your face. Oh, oh my goodness. I a brand new car, and then I will give you price. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> the, the thing about Mr. Lee, right, is like what, what makes it so funny is that the man, like, he knew how to set up a store, right? If you're he a game did. fan, you go into his store, like, you love his store. Yeah. But make no bones about it, he is not a game fan. He nope. is a he. He is a business, business man. man. A business. <laughs> yes, he's not, you're not gonna go there to have conversations about games with him. No, no, that's not what he's about. <laughs> not about <laughs> any of that. I ain't never seen him pick a controller up ever. Ever in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody wants to experience Mr. Lee 2018 version, <laughs> go on over to Fordham Game, Game World, World in the Bronx. Fordham Game World in the Bronx, baby. He's still there. He's still kicking, he, though, right? He, <laughs> what? He looks, and then he the man doesn't age. Doesn't no. age. He's no. <laughs> He feeds on the blood of his clients. Oh Stop it. He's a vampire. <laughs> this is but, but man, like for real, like I I just hope that they do the games justice. They pretty them up. They run them. They, they're able to run at a, a higher frame rate. I'll be good with that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, that that was that was a great story, dude. Love, that was a love, great. We're gonna close stuff. out the show, uh, nice. Cog. I want to go to you, dude. Up, you know, man? listen. When you say Sega, you know we're older gamers, so you think classic. When you mm. say Panzer Dragoon, now you're really digging into those mm. those those heartstrings, especially yes. for someone like me, someone like Saab. Mm. What do you take away from the fact that we're gonna get these classic games in 2019? That's huge, man. Listen, I'm so Sega biased. I'm a Sega kid. I tell people all the time that was the system. So Xbox was the spiritual successor for me when I saw those type of titles on Xbox. So I love this stuff, man. Anytime there's a Sega remake, if you follow my, my timeline, I'm always tweeting, yo, Fantasy Star just got announced on the Switch or this one, you know what I'm saying? So now Panzer's coming back? Of course. I'm in the building. Sega all day, man. Love yeah. Sega to the death, man. I'll always be loyal to them. Nice, nice, King. What is cool. your final? Uh, what, what what is your final comment on on today's show regarding the I don't know um, 
re-entry into the Panzer Dragon series. See, I mean, we got to remember, there are a lot of people who don't even know what we're talking about because they started <laughs> gaming in, in, right in, in 1990, uh, yeah, 2010. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I have no clue what the hell it is. I knew he does. <laughs> Listen, um, my, my take on it is Shenmue face. If 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 y'all don't know what I'm talking about, go Google Shenmue face. <laughs> I, I have to look this up because yeah, I don't go, know. Go doing. Google Shenmue dish face, <laughs> and you will understand that the Shenmue two face on this remake is worse than the first one. Um, <laughs> I have fear and trepidation in even approaching this topic, uh, but <laughs> I want the games. I would love for them to run at 60 frames per second yep. uh, at a high resolution, uh, hopefully native 4K. If you can't get it, let me get that 1440 PlayStation P. Um, <laughs> let that happen. And and listen, I'm, I'm down for it. Like like Cognito said, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a Sega sucker. I done brought mm -hmm. Sonic. Sonic is right there in my display case. He is the mm -hmm. only dude that do not belong, but he's there. Um, <laughs> so, I, listen, I, I'm down for them. If they can do it, they can pull it off. I hope so. Like, I'm down for the Shenmue 2, but Shenmue face. We can't. <laughs> I, I, I just want you to know, I, I, I Googled it. I just want you to know, I don't like what I'm seeing. Yeah, so this is disrespectful. <laughs> I don't like what I'm seeing. Because, you see, now I have fears. Exactly. <laughs> Shenmue face. <laughs> You can't be calling it that. Oh, my well, God. I, I did. Google did. named it Shenmue Face. I, I just Googled it. It ain't right. They're talking about it's the same stiff face from back in the days. So I don't want to yeah, talk about it. I got a good boss movie. They're talking about Minecraft characters have boss <laughs> <laughs> I ain't feeling this this talk out here. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's, it's, it's straight up disrespectful. disrespectful. But listen. Uh, last but certainly not least, what what are, you, what are your takeaways? I mean, listen, I know you don't know what Shemu is. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know what Shemu is, but you may not know what Panzer Dragon is. Attic, what what are your takeaways with the oh, fact Lord. that we're gonna get this old game redone? It looks like Sega's involved, so there's gonna be some love. I'm excited. What are your takeaways on it, dude? You can throw all that shit in the bushes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, you My, the younger guy. generation has to. <laughs> you know what? Listen, uh, the one thing that you, you know, you can't make everyone like every game. I said this on yesterday's show. Not every game is for every game. Right, I mean that's that's the bottom line. That's why I seen the the Shimu three and Shimu one and two. I was not impressed. Like, right, well, <laughs> let, let's hope that they do this classic game justice. But you know what? I had about another three other topics, and there's just no way we can get fit them in. So we're going to end the show with I'm going to uh, this was it, I'm going to be honest with you. I've done a lot of shows in 2018, and for me personally, as a producer of my own content, is probably my favorite of all time. Uh, the, the 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 real life stories of us growing up. Uh, you know, uh, of of the Mr. Lee stories and the and, and the and the bunch of kids piling into a room to play a game. Uh, you know, it's just you can't make that stuff up. So I have to say thank you to the Iron Lords podcast for being here today. Each one of you guys really just completely knocked it out of the park. Uh, like I said in the beginning, please, for the love of me and and and, and if you trust my judgment. Go give these guys a sub. Start listening to the Iron Lord podcast. It is a fun, real-life show that's four guys that have a love and admiration for one another you cannot fake. I think it's important that this community support the smaller YouTubers. I think that community at the end of the day is what it is really all about. Right, supporting one another, getting to meet new people. Uh, the fact that I who knows what E3 I'm gonna hang out with these guys, but I am going to E3 with the Iron Lords at one point or another. We will yeah, talk about that yeah, privately. Yeah. That is something that has me right now with goosebumps just thinking about it. But more importantly, I want to I want to I want to spotlight each one of you individually. And cog, I gotta go to you. I mean, listen, my openings that I do for my guests were were something i learned from watching you and i give you all the credit you you have a way of putting these things together that make the individual feel special that make the person 
you know, you put them up on that pedestal. That's something that cannot be taught. It's one of it, it for me personally, seeing you do this, listening to this and now being able to do it for you guys. It literally has it's it's the it's one of the best moments in 2018 for me personally. Please tell everyone where they could follow you, sub your channel and check out your podcast. Man, thank you so much, Boom. First of all, wow. You know, it really you have no idea how much this means to me. It means to us. And um, yeah, man, the Iron Law Podcast, just like I said, group of friends. We really know each other. We really game. We really love the community. And we like to we like to actually support everybody. And from, it doesn't matter if you're the biggest guy to the smallest guy. You know, if you're a gamer, we embrace you. And I'm glad you said that because that is what we're about. It doesn't matter what platform you're on, who you are. We're going to talk these games. We're going to have fun. We're going to get these jokes. <laughs> we're going to bug out. But yeah, man, Sunday, every Sunday is the Lord's Day. You already know, man. So it will be the last show of 2018 before. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I know Attic and King are very happy that we are throwing 11 a.m. in the bushes. And uh, we will return January 6th at 1 p.m. But make sure you catch us tomorrow, 11 a.m. We will have the PlayStation, bruh. He is oh, amazing. Nice. He, we've had him before. We've, he's actually come out. He stayed with us at the Iron Lords Castle in L.A. Had a fantastic time with him. We're going to talk a lot of things. PlayStation. We're going to talk Xbox as well. And he's a good course, dude. He's great, a good dude. Great, great, guy, on, great guy to follow on Twitter for sure. Bonnie, yeah, please, yeah. man. Check us out. Even if you're an Xbox guy, please check us out. It's going to be hilarious. You know what it is with him? He's not disrespectful. Yes. That's you know what he 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 he's a PlayStation guy. He and he don't shy away from that. But mm -hmm. he's also not he's not a toxic member of the community. Exactly. He's not disrespectful to people who mm -hmm. who who like Xbox. So that's exactly. that's that's the big difference with him. Yeah, man, we like we met this dude in real life. Like me, King, good dude, stay with us. Like I said, it's gonna be lit tomorrow, Sunday, eleven a.m. The Iron Law Podcast YouTube channel. Please subscribe and boom once again. Thank you so much. Like I I, I couldn't believe I had this much fun here oh, and thanks, you dude. yourself are doing a tremendous job and i will tell you this before i pass it off to the rest of the lords is that when we had you on people were like wow it was like he is another lord I, I appreciate that. Right I, that's, that's one of again outside of this show, one of my favorite shows to have guested on because I felt like I was hanging out with friends, Facts. and I think that's what it's all about. That's what everyone told us, and, and you know you are coming back in the realm of the love. Oh, absolutely, we will definitely set that up. But listen, I have to go to King. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this: this dude has me laughing <laughs> from the start of an episode to the end, and that's why I had to throw in the gardener. <laughs> throwing people into the bushes because he is the fraud alert CEO, CFO, and he also subscribes to his own stuff, which is dope. But I, I mean, listen, King, you, you, you are the master of statues. I like that you have uh, that you're a UFC guy. You know, you talk about the fight, the, you know, different fight cards. You like boxing. You like mixed martial arts. You like statues. But more importantly, you're a you're just you're a big gamer, mm -hmm. and you are like a like really the 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 hulk if you will of the iron lords please tell everyone where they could follow you and more importantly listen to you on a weekly basis first and foremost i would like to thank you for uh giving us the opportunity and the platform to share with you when you were on the show like i, I told cognito i was like yo we we probably was like in the same space as him yeah. and it's it was so natural when you was on the show. So when we were in the chat, I told you from day one, I was like, I'm there. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Thank you, man. I, I said, come hell, you know, Saturday is really my busy day, but come hella high water, I'm there. Even if I had to do it from my car with the headphone on, I don't care. <laughs> I was here because <laughs> this man deserves every ounce of my attention. If you notice, I, I stood up all last night that's um, dope, pulling bro. the display cases from out of the man cave because I'm changing the man cave around. But I, I wanted it to be seen Ooh. on his show because he, if you look at his show notes, his his take time in, in preparing for what he do for you guys, it's immense. And he nice. deserved every last bit uh, of my respect. In doing I appreciate that. that. Thank you so much, dude. I really, really do. I mean, you know what? It's... 
if you love something, you have to embrace it. And if you want a fan base, you got to put the work in. You know, you got to respect the people's yes. time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? I, I I want to be, you know, that guy that you say when you he's on, I want to listen. And you, that that don't come from just walking in the room. You got to work. You got to put mm-hmm. your nose to the concrete. You got to grind. And you got to you got to get these subs. And that's why I was real adamant about saying you guys. You have to get over the 1,000, and then you have to get to 2 and then 10 because your show is is just one of one of my personal favorites. Thank you. It's something I look forward to every week. Well, you can catch me at uh, Long King, Lord King David. Um, o- is it OTW, I believe? King David on OTW. Don't lie. You can catch Lord King David at best. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're right. Uh, on Twitter, but uh, KOS is coming. KOS is King of the Statues, and that is a story of one man's journey into trying to become the kings of the statues my personal journey and mm-hmm. i will show you how to put together a display i will show you where to shop uh what to do uh when the statues do come how to look at them it's mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be me and this is my passion going to other uh collectors in our community nice. and checking out their statues because everybody is a king of their own castle all right, so I want to go see their collection. What makes their collection special? Uh, and you can find me at Combat Talk with the King, where I, and that's a, that's a real personal thing for me because when I sit there and I analyze a fight, it has to be worthy of my time. So if it's worthy of my time, then I took the time out to make it worthy of your time. Right. All right, mm-hmm. and if I give a, a talk about a fight, that means I want you to go in with the knowledge with your friends that you don't, you know, go in there talking about he's a southpaw and he's orthodox. I don't want you doing that. <laughs> I, I want you to understand what you're looking for, how to talk about it. And if you're betting on the fights, I'm not telling you to do so, but <laughs> you can do so with confidence, knowing that my ratio is really good. All right. Mm-hmm. So, but you can catch me on Iron Lords podcast with the family. Every mm-hmm. Sunday, now that it is over, this 11 o'clock is <laughs> over. Uh, last 11 a.m. in 2018. Yeah, so tomorrow is 11 o'clock, and I'm going to be there bright face. <laughs> you excited to the, the last bushes. one. Yes. Yeah, exactly. well, listen, always, great, great. I always have to. Uh, I have an alarm. But nine times out of ten, I, I end up waking up to that Facebook call. <laughs> and, and the icon of that blue shirt that Cognito got on there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll be about that. Yeah, I always got to wake those two lords up there. Yeah, like, was, in, in the beginning, he didn't have to wake me up. It just started in this last couple of weeks. He's like, yo, you good? Yeah, man, I'm up. He's like, oh, okay, okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> absolutely great stuff king i'm happy that your, the 11 eight shenanigans is over sovereign i want to go to you dude listen you know what you were here i really appreciate it uh that we obviously you know we were going to run it and i was still going to give you a dope opening because you deserve it Thank i'm a you. fan of you uh, I, I like the fact that you're a single player guy. You're an old school cat like me. I like the single player games. I like multiplayer, of course, because of division, destiny, and such. Mm-hmm. But I, it, it's nice to sit down and play a strong story based single player game. Uh, w- uh, tell everyone where they could follow you and, more importantly, listen to you on a weekly basis. Well, yeah, first of all, I mean, Lord Boom, you absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for having us, man. It's like, and, and just to reiterate what the rest of the Lords have said, like, when anytime anybody's on our show like we it's always jokes it's always laugh like it's always a very like a very comforting environment but especially when we have people that that come from where we come from yes and have been through the experiences that we've been through it always takes it to another level and that was obvious the moment you got onto our show oh, um thank you because those experiences are it's the the, the new york gaming scene especially in the 90s coming up to the 2000s like it's it's so unique yes mm-hmm. and it, you, you can't really have that anyplace else just it was just so crazy and just the, the fact you have somebody who that shared that with you and, and knows the people that you knew and and did the things that you did is amazing man and i i love i love your channel i love the way you handle things um and yeah like king said like if you look at the dms that we had for, for upcoming to this mm-hmm. show there's only one other person I've ever seen prepare for a show the way you do, and that's Cognito. Yeah, he told. Like, we talked about that privately. <laughs> yeah, we did. Thank you, that I appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the hard work and effort. It, yeah, it, it's really paying off. And, and again, thank you so much for having us. Pretty much. 
it, it, the only preparing I do for a show is like what I see. I waking go, up, waking up, <laughs> 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 you cracking the top on the Red Bull. <laughs> That's well, how listen. sleep originated. Well, you know <laughs> what? Well, listen to your credit, Attic. You were here on time. You were ready. You, you, you were ready to go. So <laughs> I give it a point for that move. That's what I we know, did. Right? You were hey, 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 you let that man give points to us. I like those participation trophies. Like, you know what? Man, Attic, that. You're right. You know, because Sony is not showing up to eat three. So, oh my god. <laughs> well, listen, Attic. Hey, he like not said, riding, though. He, he, I, I, I like the way that you're on the show. I like what you have to bring to the table. You, you that silent killer. Like you don't know when you're gonna you're gonna get your throat slit. Like you, you slide in there like a ninja. And I, and I think that's really good. But, uh, but please, Lord Cognito is a ninja. So how am I a ninja? Too? But, uh, <laughs> ninja could be multiple people. And if you're in a crew, it could be a, a deadly crew. So but I'm the wolf. <laughs> We're ninja. You're the wolf. You're the wolf. You're the wolf. We're ninja. You're the wolf. Yeah. Well, listen, I love what you do on the show. Please tell everyone where they could follow you on Twitter. But more importantly, listen to you on a weekly basis. You can find me on uh, IOP. Uh, tomorrow is 11 a.m., unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, next, week, <laughs> next year it's going to be 1 p.m so that's 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 something i'm looking forward to mm-hmm. uh you can find me on twitter at uh lord addict ilp twitter uh twitter i try to take that jack move approach but he has, <laughs> i don't know how he does that but that's not the, that's not the, the conversation here um i'm probably going to be streaming below today on the ilp chat nice so, nice I, i'm hearing that it's hard beautiful yeah i gotta get game pass y'all come on it's 30, it's 30 bucks for six months, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, jump on that now. One dollar first. One dollar make you holla. But yeah. I, I definitely want to. I want to thank Boomstick for uh, you know inviting me on. It's been a blast. Uh, the, the beginning with the you know the New York stories. Uh, I just muted my mic. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't right. I ain't, yeah, never even been in that, I ain't never even been in that city. So, uh, Real honesty of Attic. That's why you love him. He got a Mr. Lee where he at. He's not telling you what he did for games. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what, what I tell you on my personal time is between me and him. <laughs> He said Attic's preparations wiping the cold out his eye. <laughs> The only show I, I host is the Attic Spotlight, and you go on there. That's my like what you what the intros on there is what you get. Like <laughs> just, <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you something. At least you're honest about it. There's no doubt about it. Listen, I, I have to say this: two things. First, I want to thank the uh my panel, right? I want to thank the Iron Lords for taking the time to uh to you know to launch this new part of my channel. It's another live show. Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen once per month. Uh nice. it's gonna highlight uh you know podcasts, entire awesome. panels. Uh, and we get to we get to know them on a personal level that you don't normally do when you listen to their show. And I think that, again, it's it's community, folks. It's getting mm-hmm. to learn about the people that you listen to uh, because their stories might be your stories. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's important. But I have to thank the chat. And oh, uh, and uh, the, first of all, the the super chats are absolutely fantastic. And this is probably the most super chat I've ever gotten in uh, in any one time. And it really is just. Yeah absolutely amazing but more importantly it's the love and admiration that you guys have for one another in that chat the respect that you have for one another and i've been told this and i'm not ashamed to say it because i'm proud of it my chat is one of the nicest chats i've i've been told that by numerous people Uh, they respect one another get some of that vibe to planet xbox man yeah listen (laughs) uh, you know what it's it's i don't know what it is maybe it's the maybe it's the the good vibes i put out there uh i like Mm -hmm. to consider myself a good guy i like to consider myself the good guy of the internet uh i love and respect everyone i think that comes across through the mic and uh, it's not an act It, it this is who i was in uniform this is who i am outside of uniform Mm -hmm. uh and uh, you know what? I'm just I'm very happy that there are people that want to continue to listen to the show. Uh, this is uh, obviously was one of my favorite episodes of 2018 for sure. Uh, again, shout out to the chat. Shout out to my panel. Once again, thank you. And I will see you next month when we go live on the next episode of Double Barrel Gaming Presents. Woo! Take care, everyone. Peace.